Stupid dog. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. I like uh, just as we go to start, Elon's dogs start going crazy. And the first thing you hear in this broadcast is what? Stupid dogs. I love it. Welcome to Eyes and Ears. That's the official title, right? Correct. Eyes and Ears. Yes. Um, at first, at first, I was wondering if I should call it Eyes and Ears, like have it all one word, like E I S E N E E R S. But uh, who knows? Maybe we'll call the people who actually are fans of our podcast the Eyes and Ears. <laughs> The, the E and E's. Like Imagineers. Hey, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, we have 18 people watching already. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, I'm going to highlight some comments real whoa. quick here. Um, I'm using a new, whoa, that, that is shot massive. shot up real quick. That is a massive, massive comment thing here. We'll just put this guy right here. Um, I'm using a, a new uh, broadcast thing here a program called ecamm live i'm not familiar with it too much but hopefully there won't be too many um weird issues um but yes uh hello michael <laughs> elon says uh hello uh, can, can you see the comments too elon on your on your end i can see three comments so far okay they're coming four in. now all right someone said turn my mic up a bit okay Andrew. Tell me. Hello. I think Andrew is from Australia because he ah. said, good day, guys. Could be. Um, yeah. Tell me if that is uh, if that is better. Um, yeah. If you guys can not Hi, Kevin. hear us well enough or something, just, just say so. Um, again, this is the first time using mm -hmm. Ecamm Live for a live stream. Um, normally, I'm doing post audio. And yeah. So, but yeah, I just want to say hi, hi to Michael. Yeah, he says, you know, hello, when... Elon. Justin, hello, Michael. yes. Justin, I am, I didn't really go anywhere, but I didn't, haven't been posting. Um, I'll to kind of talk about that a little bit uh, later, kind of let people know what's, uh, what's going on. Nothing bad, just uh, been super busy, super busy. Um, and yeah, Andrew, good day to you too. If you are from Australia... Um, then yeah, that's, uh, cool. If not, I just like good saying eye. good day. Yeah. It's, it's weird. Like, um, I know it's probably morning time there. I think so. Yeah. Possibly. And he, yes, he's in, he's in Melbourne, Melbourne, <gasps> Australia. Uh, I'm not going to do an Melbourne. Aussie accent. Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah, you can oh, have some on. some funny things going on that I'm still trying to figure out. Um, and what's funny, Andrew, yeah. is Elon is actually coming in quieter on my end than myself. So it's just there's oh, some no. there's some funkiness, <laughs> but I can still hear everyone. So um, yeah, and, but, uh, uh, I to, so to everyone out there, my microphone volume is okay since. I just want to make sure about that just because I know in the past my microphone has been quiet with this this one in particular. So Yeah, we got some some uh some cool. gremlins in the system to figure out, right? One of it being Starlink, which yeah. is Elon's uh, fun internet. Correct. Right there. Um but otherwise like it's all yes. it's all good. We'll we'll get it figured out. Thank you guys though for joining. Um, I want to say hi to a couple more people. JR, yes, it's been a minute. Good to see you back. Uh, yeah, I am. I'm back. I have just been super busy, um, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. Um, kind of like, you know, how our Christmas was, how everything was, kind of why we wanted to start this and all that stuff. Um, this is kind of like the brainchild of uh, Elon and myself. Been trying to make this happen for what? Two or three yeah. months now, feels like yeah we've been kicking around this idea for yeah around around christmas i think it was and just kind of trying to go through the motions well especially uh there was a lot of technical issues on my end uh when we first started <laughs> testing out this idea um because yeah if, if you didn't know that if you didn't know earlier i am using starlink 
um, because out in the country where I live, I mean, I, I live about 15 minutes outside of uh, the city, you could say, where I am in Northern California. But uh, even then, the cell phone coverage is terrible. So, and uh, the only other option is like this other like beam internet mm. and it's like five megabits per second downloads or 25 max or something i'm like dude <laughs> that's terrible so oh. starlink is honestly the best you can get out here um we were at least lucky to to get in before the before it capped really because it's really hard to even get starlink right now because they're at capacity so oh i didn't even know that yeah we got in but it's uh yeah it definitely has its quirks and i was definitely getting some static on my mic when brad and i were trying to work this out you know a couple months ago yeah so i had we, to we figure out it what down was going to your on. macbook but i think I'm, I'm wondering if that's i don't know yeah. I mean, I'm on my I'm on my Mac MacBook right now, so I'm not sure what the deal was. Um, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, it was at my brother-in-law's place when we first started testing this out, but I'm in my own house right now, so I don't know if that makes a difference or if or if it really is the Cam Link that I got now, and then this microphone is much better. It's just know, we're all over the place. So cool. I know technology is great <laughs> when it works. I was exporting a video earlier yeah. and I forgot to hit a certain button to like to do the audio mastering at the, cause I do it at the end and the volume was like minus 13 DB on the export. And I was like, Oh crap. Like that's way, like normally it's, I mean, that's way too low. <laughs> you know, it's like, what did they say? They're whispering. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Hey, Kevin mm. Gardner. What's up, man. It's been a while um, since I've actually seen you comment. Um, you also said I sounded a little compressed. That's just me in general. I like, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I'm just a compressed guy. Oh, Jordan. Um, yeah, J Jordan's here. I did see Jordan. <laughs> um, I wanted to answer this real quick. Yeah. From Jeffrey yeah, Fry. What's up, Jordan? He, uh, welcome, Jeffrey. Thank you for joining. Um, so which channel do we comment on? Either one. Um, I see both comments coming in um, from both uh, my channel and Elon's. Um, so oh, cool. feel free to comment on either one. Um, I can favorite from here. If you guys would do me a favor, if you have any questions, if you could put a capital Q and then a colon next to it, that will just, I can search for that really quick in Ecamm and that will allow me to just filter out the questions. And then I can favorite those. Um, and I could actually add a comment or I don't, can you comment on this Elon? I don't even know. This is a, again, new software here. I can't. I can. The only thing I can do is I can chat to you directly, Ew, but I can't right. actually comment in the comments. That's right. Yeah, I think. Yeah, correct. Gotcha. And yes, uh, Jordan is here. Jordan and Haterade Cowboy, the man himself. Um, Elon, you were just on his uh, his live stream podcast thing that he has, right? I don't know why I did this with my hand. Yeah. <laughs> it was uh yeah friday friday night awesome it was cool awesome and we had uh dan from uh stark sound dude i mean i know yeah. i know i've spoken to ceos or just you know higher up people in particular companies and such but man this was the first time i met dan and he's cool he's a cool dude i mean not only is he cool and just down to earth and he's funny but like, man, know his stuff too, because we asked him a few questions that were, you know, fairly difficult questions, but he just bang, 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 just told us about the science behind it and this or that. And so, yeah, he's a really cool dude. So Stark Sound, man, they, they not only have really cool products, but they got really cool people working for him. Yeah. So I was just was at the, um, the Florida Audio Expo over the... Uh, the weekend with uh, I shot some videos for uh, Gene Della Sala. Well, I shot videos of him, um, and I'm editing them right now. But uh, yeah, we I met so many people 
there, it's so weird getting recognized too. It's like, I got recognized <laughs> a few times and my wife was with me and I'm just like, okay, I don't, this is odd. But, um, yeah, there was, there was like, uh, 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 the CEO and co-founder of, uh, Pearl Listen, Dan Ro Romer, Romer, I think his name is, but I'm like, listen to this guy talk. I'm like, this guy is like, he's like a genius. Like I'm like just listening to him and I'm like, didn't even know who he was until I'm like, this is, this is, I don't know if you've been to Cedia and stuff, right? So you go to these trade shows, you meet all these people. It's only after the fact that I'm like looking him up to see what his title is so I can put it in the lower thirds in the <laughs> right. video. And I'm like, oh, well, he's the co-founder of Pearl Listen. Okay. Um, that yeah. is great. <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah i mean i mean he's a super nice guy we chatted and everything but it's just like you you meet so many people and what i've what I always thought of like with these big like kind of trade show type things is mm -hmm. like you know you you expect because these things are like per listen speakers are not cheap right like they're very very expensive right. a lot of this especially at, like the florida audio expo it's predominantly like a two-channel hi-fi high-end Thing. I mean, there's thirty thousand oh, dollar cables okay. and things like that. So, like, you go in with a certain. It's it's hard to not go in with a certain mindset, but mm -hmm. um, you end up meeting all these people, and it's people that I've met before, but uh, people I'm meeting for the first time, and they're all like super nice, and it's just kind of like this almost like familial attitude, you know, when you just start talking to yeah. them, and they're like, oh yeah, this is uh, this is. Like this guy knows what he's talking about or like this guy's super passionate. They may not, you know, like my knowledge base is, you know, compared to like Gene from Audioholics is like, it's not anywhere close to that kind of like engineer <laughs> level or anything, you know, it's like, I'm, yeah. I'm more of like, okay, I got to work with what I've got, you know, like what are some simple things that I can do? Um, but I do like learning. So it, but like, it's still like you, you, you never know who you're like sitting next to or in the same room with, you know? It's so crazy. Mm -hmm. it's so crazy. Yeah, dude. Um, but yeah, uh Yeah, man. Got a couple questions already. Should we should we answer some or I mean they're mainly Oh, I do see Paul's question to myself about watching Twister and Atmos and comparing it to RO3D. Um, I have, no, well, I've, I have watched Twister in Atmos. Yes, but I have not yet, um, uh, watched it in RO 3d, uh, because it comes with both discs, uh, mm. because I got it from Germany and, you know, RO is much more popular in Europe, uh, especially when it comes to native RO mixes. Yeah. So I want to. I would have to switch out my IOTA currently and put in my Marantz SR7015, which mm -hmm. supports RO3D. Um, so I haven't quite done that yet, um, at least to make the comparison. But I will say the Atmos version of Twister was, geez, dude, one of the most active height channel experiences I've heard. Yeah. Um, you know, because a lot of times, a lot of times it's it's hit or miss. You know, unfortunately, and yeah, that one. And it, and there was a point because I have two external amplifiers in my system yeah. currently, and one amplifier is powering my ear level speakers, and the other amplifier is powering my high channels. So I can just easily just boop, just turn off the ear level speakers, turn off that amp altogether. So I'm just hearing the height information. And it, it was just constant. I, I watched a few scenes, uh, maybe about like 20 minutes worth of scenes with just the height channels on, just curious to see what I was actually going to hear. Yeah. And it was constant. There was like only like very, very small moments where there was nothing coming out of the height channels at all. Otherwise, it was little insects chirping or music sometimes, or obviously when the twisters came, it was a bunch of wind yeah. and just debris flying around. So like, it was crazy, man. It's one of the most active at most experiences I've ever witnessed. So I highly recommend it. 
So I've 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 have the imported German Twister release that you have with both. I don't have an Oro 3D capable system, but I have watched the Atmos version of Twister. Um, mm-hmm. I will yeah. say right off the bat, the the last it is like leaps and bounds ahead of the original Blu-ray in terms of vid- like visual quality. <laughs> it's the problem with Twister is it's, yeah. it's it's definitely needed a new scan for many many years. Um, and I don't know, I can't remember if they did mm-hmm. a new scan for this Blu-ray, but it looks very, very, it looks so much better than the, the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray almost looks like an upscale DVD in a lot of instances, like the <laughs> yeah. original Blu-ray. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, dude, the Atmos track, like it, I will say it's super active, but I do sometimes wonder if they just kind of overdid it a little bit. Like it's a li- like, like, like you said during the twister scenes, it's awesome. But then like, yeah. There are other scenes where I'm like, it kind of took me out of the movie because I'm like, I know I was noticing things overhead, and I was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong, but like, <laughs> um, I'm, I like, right. and and this is like a personal preference thing too, right? So it's like, do you like, how far removed from the original like intent was it? Also, you know, that's mm. something I always try to like think about too. It's like, okay, did did Jean de Bont want it to sound like this? Or did he supervise yeah, I wonder this if mix, he was, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It still sounds amazing, yeah. but I'm like, you know, I, I do like that they include the original track on it as well for those, like, purists that, like, want to hear, you know, this 5.1 or whatever. Um, but, yeah, I, I think, like, there is a yep. there's a time, there's, a, like, a place for a discussion about that because it's, you know, it's like how active do you want it to be? It kind of goes back to me to that, like, 3d movie effect where like everybody just wanted stuff popping out at you at all times and it's like but do you like (laughs) uh, you know it's like (laughs) so there's like a personal preference thing for sure and i I think like there's something for everybody out there um yeah i really i did i did like the track it's definitely one of my uh like it's in my demo rotation although i will say it it Mm -hmm. was one of the few discs that i had trouble um converting to a uh like a, a rip for like my my oh. whole media server yeah it just didn't like the audio was always yeah. like out of sync so i don't know if it had something to do with oh, like no. it i don't know uh, i was just like you know what i'll just use the disc i was hoping to rip just a few scenes to like play you know just to kind of have like a demo playlist um kaleidoscape esque right. you know how you can <laughs> without without spending uh, <laughs> right. thirteen thousand dollars or whatever it is um but yeah <laughs> like yeah that's a that's such a great movie um has has anybody in the comments really? like anybody in chat seen the trailer for the new twisters movie and if so can you comment on what you think of it cuz i already know what i think of it i'm like <laughs> i mean i'll just i'll just say have you seen it elon oh yeah i saw the well i saw the the teaser during the yes. super bowl yeah 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 and then I went. I, then I went and watched like the full trailer. Yeah. But uh, but yeah. I mean, we can talk about it right now. Sure. I sure, don't care. Yeah. We can talk uh, about I mean, it because we're gonna talk about whatever. Yeah. To me, it just seems like they changed a few things in the original script, and they're like, "Well, let's just make the same movie again." Like there, there were like tent pole, like tent pole moments yeah. in the original movie that were like in the trailer redone, and I'm like, if it's a reboot, just call it a reboot. You know, and I obviously you can't, mm-hmm. you know, uh, like I, I've, I've actually got, I'm a uh, friends with a, one of the, the actors that was in the original, um, not, I don't want to say friends, friends, but oh. like, I know him, his name's Sean Whalen. He's been in a yeah. lot of stuff, but he played, he was in the original. He had nothing to do with this one. He was never contacted about it. Um, mm-hmm. so I felt like him and I are friends on Facebook right. and I'm just like, well, that's weird like it's like they don't want anybody from the original <laughs> but i mean you know could it stand on its own sure i'm sure it's going to be like unless they kind of you know completely neuter the base or whatever it's going to be like awesome demo mm-hmm. material for sure but i don't know if it'll be much more than that um yeah and plus it just kind of seemed like it came out of nowhere i mean i i had no idea it was even in production to be honest so 
Yeah, maybe maybe that's the idea is that they don't want anybody from the original because technically it's a reboot, even though they might not be calling it a reboot per yeah, se. Like a spiritual reboot. But or yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of weird to me. It's kind of weird to me. Um yeah. Yeah. And even the I mean, it sure it was a trailer, so I don't know. Who knows if maybe they're um maybe it was you know crunching you know, like crunch time before they could actually get a trailer out for mm -hmm. the super bowl so maybe there's going to be some improvements in the final version but the twisters themselves just the cgi didn't really look all that convincing or at least just kind of all that realistic i mean i, I would i would expect yeah from what was it like 95 or 96 when the original twister came out it, yeah from I think it was like then 96. until now Might have been i would expect no it wasn't 94 yeah maybe. i would expect it was a long time ago like the cgi to be super realistic with yeah all the different things that have you know all the advancements in technology that have happened since then especially when it comes to recreating wind or just all the you know, simulations and rain things. and all yeah. kinds of stuff yeah yeah exactly so yeah maybe they maybe the actual version will be much better who knows it's weird because you know like it i do it's really hard it's always hard for me to judge like cg off of a trailer because yeah. it's a trailer and you want to kind of give it a benefit of the doubt in a way because you're like well it could be just temp effects or it could be like you know, 75% there and they just need to do like a lighting pass or something. Right. Um, you know, it, it's it, it, like, I don't think we're seeing a situation where it's like, um, like the flash movie, you know, where was it the flash recently? Right. Like oh, the, the I never, where, like I never the CGI was really, and then they try to write I, it off. That's like, what I no. heard. It, it was something even this even a lot a lot of the cgi in the new aquaman movie was i was like do they even that doesn't even look like the actor like what what is this intentional mm -hmm. it's like what is dc doing but um yeah we'll yeah. see um it's a movie that i'm definitely not going to go to the theater to see um which we rarely do anyway i don't know about you yeah. guys it just it costs so much but like just kind of dealing with people in general sometimes um, although we might go see the new Ghostbusters yeah. just because I love Ghostbusters. I'm, I'm a Ghostbusters kid. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. Plus they got the whole cast back again, even though it took like lots of convincing to get Bill Murray to make a cameo in the, the one that came out a couple years ago. Um, I'm surprised that Bill Murray is even in this new one that's about to come out. So I, I'm, I'm excited to see what yeah. they're going to do and how the original Ghostbusters are going to play into the plot of this one. So, yeah, I'm excited. Excited. Andrew said it was Aquaman was the worst movie he's ever watched, and yeah. So this <laughs> is this is this had so like this one had some moments that were like that was cool, but then like the the like beat to beat or scene to scene thing. It was just kind of like, okay. I will say it was more enjoyable than the flash, but I don't know if that's saying much, right? Like it's, it, it was just kind of, and it's almost yeah. like you had to, you had to like, you have to really like Jason Momoa, you know? And I'm like a give or take, like, it doesn't matter. My, yeah. my wife's a massive yeah. Stargate fan. So she's, you know, she knows Jason Momoa from that. I'm like, wasn't he a Baywatch mm -hmm. or something? Um, <laughs> but uh, which why? I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I. I mean, I don't think that I would ever watch it again. Um, yeah, it, it was. Yeah. Yeah, I. I and you know what? I do really. I really like Patrick Wilson though, like as an actor, like that guy. Like he's he's done some questionable movies like uh that one moonfall was it Patrick that Nelson. 
Yeah, he was in like the oh, yes. Conjuring movies, and I really, I just like him as an actor. But it's just kind of like, yeah, 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 yeah. Game of Thrones was his breakout role. I'm pretty sure. Was it? Because uh, yeah, yeah. As far as I know, I mean, he, maybe he did some other like British thing before. But. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you, oh, Jason Momoa. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I mean, he's been around for a while. No, pa Patrick. Patrick Wilson, you said. Yeah. Am I am I not remembering his name? Oh, right? that guy. Yeah. No, sorry. I thought you were talking about the British guy. I thought you were talking about the British guy, who was saying that the moon was going out of orbit in moonfall oh, i never made it that far in moonfall i think that's probably <laughs> <weird>. <laughs> he was like the main guy i think in that um maybe i don't know yeah patrick wilson was the the astronaut yes yeah, he was the astronaut yes. that was in space with halle berry right her, her character well, yeah it's true patrick wilson yeah, he's he's hit or miss, man. His his agent is kind of weird, I think, because <laughs> yeah, uh, he was in he... Godzilla versus Kong as well. Oh yeah, and he was. But I really loved him in Fargo, the show. Um, he was in like season three. Yeah, like season three, I think season two or season three of Fargo on FX. Oh, really good, really good in that one. Yeah, that is a. Uh... But I, I mean, watch that Fargo show is just a really didn't... good show in general. Yeah. Wasn't Martin Freeman in a season? Like he's the yeah. first season, right? Martin Freeman, like Bilbo I think he Baggins. was the first season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or <laughs> from, yeah, the Hot Fuzz, the Hobbit, Bilbo, the Hobbit, yeah. the uh, the British version of The Office. He played Tim, not to be confused with Jim. Um, <laughs> Sherlock. Right. He's a, yeah, he's a, yeah, I really, I think he's a funny guy, but, um, but yeah, I was going to say something here and I, I, cause we were talking about TV shows and I, one that I still want to go back and rewatch for the third time is severance because they really, they really need a, I a, know. a second season. Cause that cliffhanger, man. Um, well, the, uh, what's it say? It's Adam Scott, the mm -hmm. main guy. Yep. Um, he, he posted this very like cryptic photo on his Instagram of him running and it looks like severance or like a set on severance. And he yeah. says, glad to be back at the office or something like that. So I think it is filming currently. So hopefully we'll get it fairly soon. Maybe like early 2025, if not late 2024, who knows? But yes, I I'm do hoping. agree. Severance was an incredible show. Love it. Lumen. Lumen. But yeah, that's a super awesome. <laughs> I know. I should I should be I should wear my Lumen shirt. I got a Lumen shirt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's uh, I'm gonna answer some questions let's real see. quick because we let's got answer a few. another question. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. It looks like you're you're slightly delayed here too, Elon. Just FYI. I'm, I'm seeing you here that your, your, your audio is oh, lagging. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's happening. Whoosh. Yeah, now it's really bad. It's weird. It's weird. Like Elon will let me, uh -oh. uh, let me do that again. Whoop. Yeah. He's a, uh, let me, let me switch. Uh, let me switch scenes here real quick. I'm going to get Elon out. And now it's just me. Goodbye, Elon. No, I'm kidding. Um, and then we'll bring him back. Maybe, maybe that's that. <laughs> so maybe, uh, I don't bring know. Bring him back. Bring him back. Yeah, see, it's a, it's a bit better now. It's weird. It's weird. Technology. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Um, well, at least it righted itself. <laughs> right. Uh, let's see. I'm uh, marking some comments here. I had a few comments. I'm going to kind of... A uh, bunch of these into one. So Jeffrey asked, been waiting patiently. Actually, he didn't ask this. I'm sorry. This isn't a question necessarily, uh, but he does ask it uh, further below. Um, been waiting patiently for your upcoming manual calibration video. I, I think he's talking about mine. I I mean, I don't, you don't have a manual calibration video plan, do you? 
Um, I mean, I think I teased it at one point, but man, things have changed since yeah. then. <laughs> yeah. I would hope to, yes, but uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you're. I'm pretty sure he's talking about yours. Could be, could be. I hope so. Um, Joel asks the same thing, uh, or says the same thing. Same here, waiting on the uh, up, updated calibration video, and then Jeffrey finally asks, um, "What's the ET and the manual calibration video? I've been itching to play with my." subs again and test out how my atmos speakers perform but have been waiting for years versus digging into ocs video so basically uh i've been running into like roadblock after roadblock trying to get these done um i think i've even like talked to elon about it too because basically uh, i'll get into uh like i've recorded it several times and it just for some reason like something will always happen um and i just it just won't like the footage won't work or like I'll, I'll hit an issue within the calibration that I'll have to stop. And, um, I actually recorded like 50 minutes of a video and it was just like completely unusable. So it's like, I keep having to go back to oh. square one over and over again. Um, it is coming. It's still coming. Um, I'm also, I've also been doing more freelance work on the side. Um, and so like, for those that don't know, like the freelance work is like my main income source. So if, if for some reason, like we're struggling, I try to pick up more that way. And so that kind of takes time away from doing the channel, even though I try to do the channel full time, it's a whole thing. Like it's, it's like, it's super difficult as you know, to kind of like balance all that stuff. So at the end of the day, it's like, I got to yeah. make the money, but I'm also like, uh, it sucks. Cause like, I feel, uh, like, so I don't know what the right word is here, but like, I really want to like deliver that to everyone. Cause like one, like people have been waiting for it, but it's like, you guys are subscribed to me and like, you follow me since like whenever you started. And it's like, because of you, I'm able to actually still make some money from YouTube and everything. And it's like, I'm like super appreciative. Mm -hmm. And so like, that's how I want to give back. Um, and it is coming. It's just, I also want to, part of it is I want to elevate it above like me redoing the mini DSP tutorial, I want to elevate it above what it originally was. I want to make it so it's yeah. it's like the de facto like go to for like why are you gonna watch the old one? Watch this one, right? Like even you know, so it's just like I've spent a lot of time trying to figure that out. That's been most of the time that I've I think I've spent is uh making it more uh, accessible. But also like like implementing like some quality of life features, uh, so you know each each like if it's all like it's gonna be all like chaptered out right like so like there's gonna be like a big like long video but then also like multiple smaller videos, uh, but each thing is gonna have like its own like little ticker in the upper right hand corner so at any time you could quickly see where you are in the video and then use the timestamps below. So it's like, Oh, I need to rewatch this part again. I can go right to it instead of having to try to hunt for it, you know, in a specific thing. Obviously I'm not going to like break it down like per sentence or something, but it's like, you know, per like main thing that you're doing. Um, that's what I'm, I'm planning on. So hopefully all that work will not, uh, disappoint anyone. <laughs> Cause it, it's like, I feel like if I was watching a tutorial, then, that's kind of like how I would want it done, right? Like I would want to be able to see it uh, or, or like be able to be able to reference sections again really quickly and easily. Um, so hopefully um, that answers you guys' questions. It's, as far as ETA though, that's really hard because um, I'm trying to do the mini DSP tutorial first because that leads into the manual calibration. Uh, so it's like I want like kind of one, like a mini DSP video and then here is this manual calibration video. And then I think in between I'm also, cause like when I'm doing the subwoofers, I'm also doing a, a, uh, SVS specific video in between. So if you have like subwoofers with parametric EQ, doesn't have to be SVS. You can get mini DSP like performance using the polarity phase and parametric EQs on the subs. It's not as advanced and not, won't be as good as a mini DSP, but it, Honestly, it might get you close enough that you go, I don't have to spend $250 to $300 on a mini DSP. Um, so, yeah, hopefully that uh, that kind of answers 
uh, the questions there. I, I am still working on it. I haven't forgotten about you guys. Um, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, like basically I've like Jeffrey actually commented and says you're filming a youth man's recent Star Wars theater tour is very well done, by the way. Thank you. Thank you so much. I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, I'm actually working. Hmm. I said it a little earlier, but I'm also now working with Gene Della Sala from Audioholics. Um, we're going to be shooting a bunch of videos uh, with him or for him. I'm also producing his content as well, meaning that I'm editing it and doing all that fun stuff. So, um, yeah, he's he's uh, super knowledgeable, and uh, you might see me on some live streams of his um, coming up too. So, um, I kind of nice. hijacked this here, Elon. Uh, <laughs> I just took it. Well, no, I mean you had to explain what you were doing because it, you know, it's a complicated thing to to record a tutorial. So, yeah. Well, plus, I, plus, I mean, just so the audience knows, I've seen a snippet of what Brad has been trying to do, um, as far as just using Ecamm to film his tutorials and man, like he said, it's on another level compared to the original tutorial going through RAW. So when it does finally come out, it's, it's going to be top notch because I've seen just to just the tip of the iceberg and it's, it already looks really good. So, well, thank you. Thank you. I, yeah. I have this yeah. problem and I think Elon might be um similar uh in a way. Also we're dealing with some like we still have some audio delay issues on Elon. So I don't understand what's happening here, but um just really? FYI, we're we're both aware of it. Elon knows. Um yeah, it's weird. Maybe I don't know, you could try leaving and coming back in, see if we can that fix it fixes it. It's like it's like super bad right now. It's very bad. Are, yeah. are there people? Are there people talking about it in the comments no, as I'm well? No, I'm just noticing it. Actually, it if, any, on your, if you guys yeah. see, if you guys notice a weird thing with Elon's video out of sync with his audio, um, just uh, leave a comment. Let us know because it, um, it, 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 like I'm seeing it on my end, but I don't know if like you're seeing it here. Cause I don't have like a live view of like what's going on, um, on YouTube's, uh, live stream thing. This is a, this is a glory of technology here. Um, <laughs> and this is, this is something that we dealt with when we were trying to test out all this stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, see, now you're good. Cool. Okay. No, wait, hold on. Now you're not, it's weird. It, you'll be good for a word. And then it goes, um, Beep, pop, boop, pop, beep, pop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I can see a delay here a bit. Okay. Yeah, Thanks, I, Paul. I wonder if I uh, just solo you here, see what happens. Guest three is not in the chat here. It's just me. Let's try, um, <laughs> let's try going back. I don't know. <laughs> Paul says you need to calibrate him and adjust his delay distance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we're wondering right. if it's so, uh, a just... yeah. Just try leaving and coming back in, and we'll see if you, if All you're right. if you're cool with that. Sorry, I'll guys, do we're doing some technical uh, troubleshooting here live on YouTube. Um, we, right. We're, we've been trying to figure out if it's Ecamm or Elon's computer. Um, so you'll see like a blank side here for him, uh, real quick while he's, uh, while he left, um, but he should be back in. Um, this is like, I, long story short, I didn't pay for Ecamm. I actually won a year pro subscription. So that's why we're trying it out, but we're, we're trying to see he's back. Um, hello. And now you're good, I think. For now. For now, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. Yeah, well, uh, it's like it drifts after a while, and um, mm -hmm. who knows? Who knows? Um, but yeah. So we'll, we'll like you know, I'm not saying that, that we'll end up using Ecam forever here. Just uh, I was explaining to them that 
I actually won this like a year pro Ecamm Live subscription, and um, yeah. it's great. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I've tested it with other people, and I've never had an issue. And it, it's like Elon's internet connection doesn't like mine. I think that might be it. But um, yeah, Andrew's just recommending Elon turn off your video feed and just use audio for a bit. Um, but I like Elon's face. <laughs> like that's the main <laughs> problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you guys, by the way, in chat for everyone for joining and, and just hanging out and uh, dealing with our technical issues. Um, just know that we we both appreciate you guys like immensely, like for being here and taking time out of your day to just come and hang out and um, listen to us jibber jabber and figure figure shit out, figure stuff out. Sorry. Um, figure stuff out, and uh, there might be some light cursing here and there occasionally. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, we got a few more questions. Yes. You want to just like try those, try to answer those? Yeah, man. Yeah, he, Elon's almost afraid to talk. Let's I could see it. the the delay in his voice. He's like, "Am I going to be delayed? I don't know." Um, so Paul no, Edward no, no, asked no, no, no. Elon, "Have you? Oh wait, no, you already answered this. Never mind." Uh, <laughs> I had started. Sorry. Um, let's Dang see. It. I'll answer it again. Hey, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Kevin said, "Asks uh, speaking of Atmos ear candy, Brad, did you get a copy of Yellow's Point album yet? Elon has one great demo material. I've actually had it for a while, and it sounds freaking amazing. Um, they're uh, like, yeah. It, it was funny because Elon." I remember talking to Elon about it and he's like, I don't know who they are. I'm like, Ferris Bueller, like the whole theme song there. Like, and he's like, Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. And it was like, then the connection was made. Um, but yeah, it was, a, uh, it was a fun time. It was, a. I I haven't listened to it recently just cause I've been so busy, but, but yeah, for sure. And now your video's out again, Elon. What the heck? cool very cool uh, yeah someone says this delay is inter interesting does starlink have bad ping i th i mean it's satellite technically right like it's so probably i'm just yeah uh, um yeah i don't know um yeah, we can always. Uh... Speaking of comments, do you does eCam somehow like if somebody wanted to super chat or anything? Uh, yeah, it does will it, pop up if there was a super chat. Ecamm support that? Yeah, it'll oh, okay. it'll cool. it'll pop up, and I could uh, I could see it, and I think it'll highlight it. They added it in a recent update. Um, yeah. Okay. Wink. I see. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I love uh, the, the the delay makes everything funny. That it's just so yeah, it's cracking me up. Um, Elon wasn't doing this Friday. This is what Jordan said. So it's more than likely an ecamp yeah. thing. So next time we'll probably try Streamyard to see. Um, I think I I think I have a free trial to that, so we could try it. Like. We want to make here? it a good experience for you guys along with us where we're not having to like, we're, we basically just want to remove barriers. And the reason we're trying the eCam here is again, it was free. Um, but even if I don't use it for this, yeah. I can still use it for tutorials because it's very powerful for that. It just, for whatever reason, Elon's, e Elon doesn't, e e Starlink doesn't like me. I think they know that I've been vocal about, Tesla batteries or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not vocal at all about anything. Although, I mean, it's true. I mean, Jordan has a point, though, because we did StreamYard on his. And then when I did Shane Lee like a month or so ago, um, he was on a different one. I can't remember the name of it. Remux or something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, his was fine as well. So, hmm. Maybe it is an ecam thing. According to speed test by Ookla, my ping is 53 milliseconds. 
Interesting. And see, when you said that, that just now, you went right back in sync as you were talking about milliseconds. It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> <laughs> And see, now you're delayed. Hmm. You know what? I wonder if I stop talking for a bit and just let you take it, if you'll go back and sync. <laughs> that would be funny. Mm. Oh, I love Maybe technology. Maybe so. Yeah, I love technology. We did get a super chat for $3 from Derek, labeled test. So thank you, Derek, for testing that out for us. He's going to do a chargeback hey. after after this. He's going to be like, no, <laughs> they're not getting the money. No more. Yes, um, we'll yeah, so it does we'll show refund up. you, Aaron. <laughs> it does show up. Yeah, um, true. Cool. Awesome. Uh Kevin says, Brad, you make using hold on, let me bring this up a little bit here. Brad, you make using REW look effortless, but dang it, it is a task and a half. I've tried to align my sub to my LCR, but I can't get the same reactions to changes that you do. Gotta watch your vids over. Yeah, this is a this is something that I've been playing with two uh and it, i will agree it is a task and a half kevin it even for me um uh i'll kind of share a little anecdote here or a little experience that i've had recently where i uh i've been using the umic 2 for a while because many dsp sent it to me and i just started running into issues with uh clock adjustments uh within the mic itself so basically what that means is when you do a measurement at the at, at the end of the measurement, it will it will detect like the clock setting. I don't I'm not gonna get technical because I honestly don't know exactly what it's doing, but um, normally it has to be within a, a a tolerable range. Like there's a tolerance, so it's like 400 milliseconds or something like that. Or I can't rem I don't know if that's the right milliseconds is the right thing, but um, it has to be within like that kind of range. And if it's out of the range, then REW is like doesn't like that. It'll tell you, yeah. There's there's like issues with this or that it's like it doesn't know what is the issue so i was like doing measurements i kept hitting this thing over and over again i'm like what in the heck is going on and it was getting super frustrating because basically the measurements were unusable because it'd be like a dip where there shouldn't be a dip mm -hmm. and uh i was like you know what? screw it let me let me just plug in my u mic one let me just try the u mic one i've not knock on wood had a single issue with the UMic One since I started using it again. There's, I don't know if there's something with the UMic Two, or like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's to the point where like I don't know if I feel comfortable um, reviewing it because I think I wonder if I have a broken UMic Two, so I might need to reach out to Mini DSP and see. Mm, yeah. Because um, I didn't like they sent that to me like a year ago and I've been using it and I, it, it makes me wonder if it was like the UMic 2 or if there was like an REW update that like caused it to like funk out or something. I don't know. I don't yeah. know, but, but yeah, like REW is, it, it, it it's daunting uh, for sure. And there are still things I don't know about it. So, um, I know, uh, Ta what talking. is what is supposedly the improvement that the UMic two is supposed to bring? Um, I mean it's black first of all, which is it it looks cooler. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> no, uh, it has a larger capsule, so it's it's able to uh, it's uh, supposedly again I don't have any other reference mics to compare this to. Supposedly more accurate. I have noticed that. Uh, from measurement to measurement, like comparing the UMic 1 to the UMic 2, the frequency response measurements don't necessarily change, but the volume does. So at the same volume on the receiver, the UMic 2 is measuring about 1.5 to 2 dBs louder uh, on average than the UMic 1. Hmm. And you could see it on REW. Like literally the, the measurements are spaced out um, enough where it's like, okay, if you, if you take your mouse cursor and, and go in between... If you hold like I think it's if you hold like control or shift or something and then use the the right mouse click, it will tell you like the amount of difference. Um yeah, that's the only thing that I've really noticed. Otherwise, I mean I think most people, um, if I just made like a quick recommendation, just get you mic one. I don't think uh Yeah. I don't think it's like worth it to go the U mic two route. Um but that's just me. 
that uh you know and then jordan says uh, almost bought the umic too um but it has bad reviews on amazon highlight that real quick yeah i i mean i didn't look at the amazon reviews um it's also twice the price of the umic one yeah i mean if if we're like i think most of us here right are enthusiasts like we're not doing professional calibrations and for that like you know you can you can get thousand dollar microphones that are super accurate right like it's you can get all of this like extra stuff like you're probably not like i'm if you're you if you're doing like major calibrations on like storm audio equipment or things like that you're probably not using room eq wizard i'm, I'm saying that much you, you're probably using uh, something else <laughs> yeah. like you you know there there's a there's more like professional brand software but for what rrw is it's an amazing like free tool like it's it's hard to believe that it's free you know mm -hmm. but with that it, there's also like yeah. some you know there's some expectations that you have when it comes to stuff like that and it's and that's okay like i'm i'm willing to deal with that versus spending you know a thousand dollars i think someone actually had a question not directly related to this but um it was andrew actually he asked, uh, have you tried Odyssey Multi-EQ X software for $200? Um, no, and that's the reason is the the problem for like, <laughs> um, I mean, I do want to try it. I would love to. The issue is um, because I, uh, and, and Elon might have the same thing too, right? When, we, when we're reviewing equipment, like we swap out stuff so much, we might end up getting a new receiver that we end up loving and keeping or a pre-pro. The problem with the multi-EQX is it's tied to that specific receiver. You can't just like go use it on another receiver, yeah. like another Denon or Marantz that supports it. It has to be right. you know, that one sing singular unit. And then if you sell it, I'm not sh I think you can transfer the license, but don't quote me on that. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm assuming it's going to be a license that is on that particular unit and it stays on that unit. Yeah, but yeah, it's weird. Like I don't. Yeah, they may be able to maybe like disable the license when when you maybe you need to notify them that you have sold it so you can download it again without having to pay for it again. Who knows? They probably have. Yeah. I don't know, some sort of program one. in place for yeah. that. Yeah. I've heard it's very, yeah. very nice. It's supposed to be, you know, very like comparable to Dirac in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I want to try it. If I could get like, I've been trying to get a, um, a copy to review because you don't see a ton of them out there um, to also compare to like, okay, how, mm -hmm. if I'm doing a manual calibration, how does it compare? You know, how are the, like, are the features decent enough on it that i could go you need to you need to spend this 200 dollars if you're if you're an enthusiast and you want all this control although i never liked saying to people you need to spend this money um you know i think that <laughs> right i really do think that 200 dollars could go much further by you know if if you're cool with diy stuff making your own acoustic panels you know but depending on where you are, mm -hmm. the, who your significant other is, you may be limited to what you could do in that regard. You know, I'm, I know I'm extremely fortunate um, in that um, I have a dedicated room that I could just kind of do whatever I need to do in um, to get it to sound good. And I also want it to look good. Um, but, yeah. you know, not not everybody has that luxury. And it's definitely a luxury, right? Like it's not you don't need it to yeah. live. I will disagree with that, but I need it to live. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, Elon, you and I have tried a few times to do, uh, like some REW remote stuff. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, why don't, why don't you tell the people how that went for us? <laughs> yeah. Well, first I was using my MacBook, um, and, uh, well, I mean, just because I'm more familiar with it. And I use it on a day to day basis for all my creative stuff, you know, editing all my videos and so forth. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I took it in and, you know, I had Brad on a, not a live stream, but just a, a video call, uh, kind of walking me through some stuff. And then, 
you know, before we knew it, we were getting some really crazy results, like trying to, um, what was it? Like just, just trying to time align the subs or something like that. And, or even just the frequency response. I don't remember, but there was just this, it was like 10, 20 Hertz. And all of a sudden this like huge dip. And then it like came back up at like 80 Hertz as if there was nothing between like 40 and 80 Hertz. And I'm like, clearly that's not right. (laughs) Clearly, clearly there's not just this gigantic hole, um, in the frequency response. So I ended up hijacking my daughter's, uh, windows laptop just because she was at school at the time and yeah, just ran REW the same and everything was fine. So for whatever reason, doing REW or at least trying to calibrate REW on a Mac, uh, it's got some issues and I don't know why there's just something going on with the hardware and, um, the operating system and how that works. And audio in general, but I mean, I've dealt with audio on the music side of things, Mm -hmm. either writing my own music or mixing music, um, for other people's, et cetera. I've had no issues whatsoever on a Mac. I've been exclusively Mac with that. I have a, an iMac that I still from time to time use, uh, because my, uh, audio interface is old enough to where my new laptop just it's not compatible with my new laptop. So I sometimes still have to use that interface with my older iMac, but, but even then it it runs just fine. Um, when it's, when we're talking about music, so I don't know what it is about REW. I don't know what it is about home theater audio and Macs, but they just don't like talking or something incompatible somehow. Yeah. Um, you know, like, yeah, I, yeah, (laughs) I I think, uh, I've said it before. Um, I used, uh, I think in one of my last REW videos that I did, I used the Mac to read measurements and that's, I'm, I'm, I actually cut out a bit in there where I basically said something about to the effect of like, I, I can never get REW to work properly on a Mac or any mini DSP thing to work on a mac without jumping through a bunch of hoops oh mini dsp as well yeah i have the weirdest time like uh for like like you guys can't see it but i have the flex plugged in over here because this is where i like edit videos and stuff and so like i i edit on a mac because i use final cut but um so i have everything eq'd in here with the prime wireless pros and i have a a period audio subwoofer down here and I have a couple different profiles, but I literally had to grab my $200 Windows laptop to do the calibration because I couldn't get the mini DSP flex to interface with the, the, the M1 MacBook Air. And then I just started running into issues with it even reading the U-Mic. And I was like, yeah, screw this. Like, so my recommendation <laughs> is, is I, 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 I wanted to do videos on REW on the Mac but my video would literally just be me going, I can't get it to work. <laughs> There's no video. <laughs> this is it. This is a YouTube short. Yeah. I can't do this. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I think that it, it might be something that I'm doing. Um, the thing I, I really do hate about any type of Mac is like, especially like their laptops now is like very limited IO on them. You know, you need like a dongle for everything, you know, um, I think somebody mm. in the comments said Apple sucks. I won't necessarily agree with that. We're all entitled to our opinion, but uh, they're great for some things, very specific things. But outside <laughs> of that, like, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you said, did you guys try the <laughs> anti Apple suck button? There isn't one. <laughs> Text green game of. <laughs> I will say this, you know, a lot of people. Uh, will crap on the Nvidia or like not crap. Will will go into the comments on my Nvidia Shield video because I had some not so nice things to say about it. And I still stand behind the fact that the Nvidia Shield is a piece of garbage that no one should own. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's just I got a bum two bum units that just happen to never work with Plex or anything like that. 
Um, they are this very like they used to be great, and then through software updates, they got worse and worse and worse. And yeah, it's it's hard to recommend uh. those to anyone now, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I have to read basically anytime I go to watch a, a rip or something, I have to reboot it. Otherwise, it, yeah, it's just a whole thing. So, um, but uh, I'm not that. That's not anything to dig against, like Android. It's just saying that device in general. I do, I do not like it. Like it is just not a good thing to use in my that opinion. Sucks. Because yeah. like Nvidia Shield is one of the few like streaming boxes you can get that supports uncompressed audio. That and that so. is true. That is true. And so like when it does work, it's great. Mm-hmm. But it, the 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 issue is like getting it to work consistently. I think. Um. So Marv says Nvidia Shield yeah. sucked since the last update. Yeah, it sucked for me for a few, mm-hmm. a few updates ago where it's like we end up just. I'll just end up because normally what I'll do is I'll just I have like a massive server, um. So like, you know, I have like a 20 terabyte hard drive connected and like if I buy a disc, I typically rip it and put it on that. But it's gotten to the point where I just go grab the disc and put it in the player because it's just going to be an easier experience than trying to get the shield to work, unfortunately. Um, so, yeah, Dang I mean, it. but that's it. I mean, you know what? That's just my experience. That's my re- like, that's what I recommend people based on my experience, you know, like. It's all like a personal thing. I, I can't, I don't know. Like I, I ultimately someone has to decide for themselves if they, if, if it's like, if it works for you, man, that's, I'm so, <laughs> I'm like envious. Cause I'm like, what are you doing that I'm not doing? You know, it's like, I, um, I will <laughs> say one of the things that as a streaming box that I don't really like about it is the, uh, the difficulty getting it to just match the frame rate of the original content. Like it's, they still haven't oh. figured that out. And oh wait, that's what the comment they, yeah, just the, said. Yeah, wow, we're like on the same wavelength. Yeah, um, <laughs> and that's the one thing you know, not to not to uh, go back to the whole like you know, like an Apple TV will do that pretty much ninety nine percent of the time, unless you're using like YouTube. Um, but yeah, it even yeah. got to the point with streaming stuff. I just I use the LG C ones built in web apps to watch like Netflix or something. I was, uh, I was like, just take out more devices than I, than I need to. But, um, yeah, we don't even like really watch any streaming services anymore. Um, man, this, this live stream is all over the place, but that's kind of like what these episodes are about, I guess. Like we're just, we, I mean, we're going to be talking about nerdy home theater, cinema, music, whatever, like yeah. whatever we want. Yeah. In a world, we're we're now changing the podcast name to Lucy Goosey. Lucy Goosey. Because <laughs> we're going to no, talk about yeah. whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It's just you know when you when you get like passionate about something and you just want to talk about it. You know, like we like we'll just talk about like when Elon and I will get on the phone with each other. How like sometimes we'll just end up talking for three hours about the most random shit, and it it's yeah. just so it's like how did we get here? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, it's like, so that, weird. that's, that was the whole reason we wanted to start this was because, you know, our conversations we had over the phone were like, we should be doing this on our channels <laughs> because, yeah. because of just all the different twists and turns that it takes and, um, all the stuff that we're into. So makes sense. Yeah. See, like right here, I'm I'm so envious. Am of I this. still I'm still delayed, aren't I? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It it'll come and go. Like right now, you said, yeah. am I delayed? Like I still see the delay. Um, the, my <laughs> Nvidia Shield TV Pro works perfectly with Plex and my PC server that has 200 terabytes of four K disk. I'm like suit like that's awesome, and like I'm I'm wow. super envious of like I wish I had that same experience. That's the thing, right? It's like. I don't, I'm not, I don't have anything against like, Hey, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to hop off for a second and then I'll try and come back on. I'll see. Okay. Maybe, maybe it makes some little tweaks. So I'll be right back. 
He'll be right. Um, well, while you're here, uh, or while he is doing that, what do you, uh, Paul asks, what, what do you stream your true HD losses rips on Brad? Um, I mean, basically I still really only use the Nvidia shield for that stuff, but, um, all the rips that I have, I still keep the discs in the closet. So I, if it's a newer movie, I will literally just grab the disc. I'll keep the disc out like off to the side. I have a small like media rack. Um, just outside the room and that's what I'll just grab it um, and we'll watch it if it's something what I will say is I have better luck um, typically playing back just short demo clips but even those are like not as not as like uh, it's still not consistent whatsoever so like I will end up like it'll still like drop frames it'll still skip around and this is running like I've tried different hard drives I've tried SSDs I've tried even like an NVMe inside of like uh, an enclosure I mean we're limited by like the the bus speed on the Nvidia shield so like you're never going to get like you know 5500 uh you know megabytes per second or meg anyway you know you know what I'm talking about I you know I I initially bought a uh, an additional uh, two terabyte NVMe SSD, put it in an enclosure. I was like, if this doesn't work, I'm going to use it on my PC anyway. And uh, yeah, it didn't work. So I'm using it on my PC now. <laughs> um, but uh, oh yeah, Jordan says, Brad, you need a Zidu. Is it, is it Zidu or Zidu? But I, I would love to check that out. Um, I thought about buying one, but I need to reach out to them to see if they would uh, would be interested in like, allowing me to check one out um yeah i yeah uh, so uh he says i've always been an nvidia fan but lately i call shenanigans they are milking us all dry my next fx car will will be amd yeah i um i actually just recently um uh my wife got me a uh a christmas present in the form of a 4070 super um i mean i love it but like i like I'll just go where performance is, you know, like if it's AMD or if it's Nvidia, like I'm not like, yeah, they, it, it is weird. Like being at a point where like, okay, yeah. A $600 graphics card is mid range. It's like, really? But I mean, everything like, God, look at house prices. Look at everything else. It's crazy. Um, I will say I'm loving it though. I'm loving playing games. I, I loved playing hell divers uh, too, when I could get in. Um, but it's been about a week now where their servers have been at capacity and, Oh man. Yeah. Um, I was going to do a video about that, um, about like just upgrades for gaming in general that I've done. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it, I, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't had the time. I've been doing a lot of freelance work outside of, uh, YouTube, which, um, um, you know, like I said earlier, I think someone asked, someone came in kind of late and, uh, Ask whatever happened to the manual calibration tutorial, Brad. Uh, it is still coming. Um, I just uh, have been doing a lot of work outside of YouTube that has taken up a lot of my time, unfortunately. Um, and so I've had to kind of scale back a little bit, but I'm getting back into the swing now. Um, and I also had gone through a bunch of different issues with trying to record stuff. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's getting back in the swing that's hard. You know, it's like I basically what I do for a living is freelance videography and editing work. Um, and I also do like consultations for like home theater and lighting and, uh, not lighting in like your house, but like video lighting and stuff. Um, yeah. So it's just been kind of a lot of that and it's just, um, it's hard. It's, it's hard to sometimes balance that where you're like, Oh man, I just spent 12 hours a day doing this shoot. I really don't have, I don't, I don't have the, the energy to go home and, and I just wanted to crawl into bed. Right. You know, and it all changed once I hit 40. That's what it is. Like I, I start, I'm working out more, I'm trying to eat better, but it's like, I still get tired. I'm old now. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of where that's at. It, it is still coming. I'm, I'm totally like, uh, gonna do like both like i have like a list of videos and those are the top priority um but i also don't want to let those videos keep me from making videos so like if i just like hey hang around too long 
um, trying to like to say, oh, let me do this, then, uh, you know, it's not going to be a good thing, right? Like it's it's like I got to actually still put videos out even if this one's going to take longer. I'd rather it take longer and like be better in the, in the long run for you guys because th these things are on the internet for ever right like well forever is like a relative term but you know what i mean like if i'm gonna put it out on the internet i want it to be as good as it possibly can be and i don't want to like half-ass it so um that's why i that's why it's also taken so long is like i i have like a really crazy high quality bar that i'm like it has to exceed the other videos that i've the other tutorials that i've done so yeah hopefully that uh answered your your question question krishna um Joel Gonzalez asks, um, here, let me uh, actually switch this over while it's just me. There we go. Um, let's see. Joel Gonzalez asks, um, whoa, how did this get like this? StreamYard, people. We need to go to the StreamYard, I guess. Wow. Yeah. You guys seeing this? It's crazy. It makes me look like I don't know what I'm doing, but I completely do. Oh, Elon's back in. Elon's here in the guest room. So he should be uh -huh. popping back up. You can probably hear him. I don't know where. Well, let me try to bring him in here. Hello. There you are. Change, change sources there I on am. me. I don't know what happened. Yes. Um, I was just answering a question real quick. Um, Brad, did you from uh, Jose or Joel Gonzalez? Brad, did you ever play with the acoustic treatment in your room by replacing some of the panels with diffusers? I think you mentioned in one of your videos that you might want to raise the RT60. So I actually did not do this. Um, basically, uh, I just haven't had the time. Um, there's a lot that like uh, I think somebody asked earlier that uh, um. Actually, this is kind of like a nice little segue into this question, too. Um, so basically it says, do you ha guys have any exciting plans for future videos on your, either of your channels that you guys can share? So, yeah, this is something I'm actually working on outside of just the updated tutorial. Um, I'm making some modifications to the theater room. And uh, I'm, uh, I think originally with the, the tutorial series, or not tutorial series, with the, um, the build series on the home theater, I, uh, I said, I can't wall mount the TV because the window is right in front of it. I'd had this whole plan when we bought the house and that just never worked out. I ended up buying, like getting a, a, like a metal TV stand that's just like for the TV and the TV only. So it like goes up to like, you know, you can adjust the height. So that'll allow me to actually hmm. push the TV stand or push the TV to the wall, which will open up the, uh, the entertainment stand underneath it. So I can finally get the center channel out of that little cubby hole, put it on top. And that also allows me to like swap it out when I go to review other center channels and stuff. It also has the added benefit of making this smaller room feel a little bit more open, which should allow me to more easily get lights and stuff in there to shoot. Because when I have shot the video, like when I've tried to shoot the tutorial videos, it's a lot. There's a lot <laughs> going on in there in that small room, and I can't get out. Um, if I if I like needed to, I'm like crap. Well, I guess I'm just gonna hold. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna have to go to the bathroom later. You know, it's like so. Yeah, it's a uh, so that that's some that's a plan that I have that I'm gonna make a video about because it's something I've wanted to do for a while, and I think uh, for those that can't like mount their TV or like they're trying to think outside the box and want like a cheap way to do this or to, to like basically allow them to have access to like maybe the top of their entertainment stand maybe they want a screen that comes down from the ceiling in front of the tv this might be a, like an option for people um and it won't be sponsored or anything obviously i'm I, like i paid for all this stuff myself so um that is a that's something that i'm planning i don't know about elon like since you're back we can test out the the um the audio delay and see if it's any better um what do you, do you have anything? Blah, 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 bleep, delay. Not even going to say anything right now. Not even going to say anything. Um, but do you have any plans uh, for future videos on your channel that you could share that, you, that you're excited about? Um, I kind of touched, kind of touched on this 
um, on Jordan's podcast or on Jordan's live stream. But uh, I, I'm currently, I currently have the Golden Ear passive soundbar uh, currently hooked up in my living room, not in my theater. Um, just because I've been really trying to find the best solution for open concept living rooms. Um, just because open concept living rooms are like the worst when it comes to actually trying to have a home theater in it. Um, especially because I've got the way it's laid out. I've got uh, this gigantic sliding glass door on one side, the entryway to the front door on the other side. Um, and then I've got a fireplace right in front of me with the TV above the fireplace and the TV is mounted. It's the Samsung frame TV. Um, so we, you know, whenever we're not watching it, we have it look like a painting. So it's just part of the ambiance of the room, whatever. Um, but it's mounted like five, just a little more than five inches above the fireplace mantle. Hmm. So five inches isn't very tall, right? Right. So I needed to find something that was short enough to fit underneath or at least not block the TV at all, but also long enough to almost take up the entire TV. And I was looking at, you know, I didn't really want to do active sound bars because where I have it, I mean, yes, there is an outlet that is directly behind the television. Mm -hmm. Um, but the Samsung frame actually doesn't use, uh, like the TV itself doesn't, you don't have to plug it into an outlet because it gets the power and the video from the one connect box. Um, so I've got, it's got like a fiber optic cable that goes from the TV to the one connect box, uh, which I have like to the side of the TV. Um, so it, anytime I have to review a sound bar, I've got to like do some weird stuff and, and it's kind of junky and clanky and whatever. And it's, you know, connected to an outlet that's to the side of where this particular spot is. And then I've got to snake the HDMI cable from the powered soundbar the other direction. So it just looks terrible, right? There's, there's no real clean way to do an active sound bar when you've got a TV above the fireplace and you've got an open concept living room. So in my mind, I was like, okay, since I have all my equipment, my receiver, my amps, to the side in this cabinet, I should be able to snake some speaker wire to a passive soundbar. I mean, this is still in its in its review phase, yeah. so I don't actually, I haven't actually like put speaker wire, you know, up and through the walls yet. Um, but I plan to, if indeed this is like my end game soundbar you could say the reason i chose the golden ear um i think it's like a super cinema array xl i think that's what the actual name is yeah i chose that one because it was it almost is long enough to take up to span the entire length of the tv it's like 61 inches long or something and I think the TV altogether, it's a 75 inch TV diagonally, but I think that equates to like 64 inches or 65 inches across. So a 61 inch sound bar, it's almost the entire length. Um, so it's got, you know, left, center, right, of course. And not only that, but it was literally one of the only sound bars or passive sound bars that I found that can handle up to 300 Watts per channel. Um, so that was the biggest thing because, you know, it's yeah. a fairly large living room. We're sitting about 13 feet away from the TV as it is. So we're going to need some power to push all that, all those, you know, audio waves through the air into our listening position. So I needed a lots of, lots of power. 
Um, cause most of the other passive sound bars out there, they can only handle like maybe hundred Watts per channel, 150 Watts per channel, which is still pretty decent. But when I saw that the one I have now can handle up to 300 Watts, I mean, obviously I don't think I'll ever get it up to that point where it's actually using 300 Watts. But it's also nice to have that headroom. Yeah. Um, so that's why I went with that, that particular one. And it's been pretty good so far. I mean, I don't want to spoil the review or anything, but spoil um, it, spoil it. There, no, <laughs> but I mean, there there are little quirks that I've come across uh since I hooked it up a few weeks ago. Um, but along with that, I also uh requested the force field 30 subwoofer, also from Golden Ear. Um, <clears throat> because it was small enough to where it wasn't just obvious that there was a subwoofer there because it's kind of hiding behind yeah. the chair right now, which is great. Yeah. Um, it just kind of fits in the little corner over there by the cabinet. And, uh, but it's, it's powerful enough though, that it still, you know, really fills in that bottom end when I'm watching a movie. Um, so I've been, I've been pretty impressed with it so far. It only goes down to, I think 25 Hertz. Mm. So I wish it would dip down a little bit lower than that. But, um, but I mean it, cause I think I'm going to do a, a review on the sound bar and the sub together. Mm -hmm. Um, but golden ear did also send me some in ceiling speakers because I was thinking maybe if if indeed the passive soundbar was amazing that I would also install some in ceiling speakers behind me so I could have a nice 5.1 system. Um, but you know, my wife is still kind of a little iffy on that. She doesn't really want me to, to, you know, create some big holes in the ceiling just because it's a, it's a new build. We just moved into yeah. this house last december so we've been in it just over a year now and you know it's pretty much exactly her dream home <laughs> so uh i don't think in her dream home she she expected to have some you know speakers in the ceiling so she she may come around she may not so it uh, i don't know i may not even care about having 5.1 anyway because it's it's been pretty good so far just having 3.1 yeah. um but on top of that uh i did finally get a hold of somebody uh from kef um, i've never personally reviewed anything from kef on my channel yet but uh i found out somebody commented on one of my videos i can't remember which one but uh, I think it was I think it was the Sennheiser Ambio Max review okay. that I did a, a few weeks ago, and I paired that with the Force Field Thirty that I currently have. Um, but somebody suggested that I should check out the Kef KC sixty two subwoofer, which is this really compact, like dual, dual six and a half inch woofers. Um, so you would think, you know, this, this can't be, you know, this, this can't go down very low because it's six and a half inch woofers. Yeah. No, quite opposite. It goes down to 11 Hertz. Whoa. So yeah, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> it's some magic there. That's like, so, wave guides uh, or something in the thing, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, the, the, it's it's got this. I don't know. They they've got some name for it, um, but uh, but yeah, I, I'm so glad that I got a response for one thing from yeah. the representative at Kef, and uh, yeah, she she's telling me that she's um, going to see what they can do because just today they launched a no a whole new series of subwoofers, so. She doesn't know if she's going to send out a KC-62 or perhaps send out one of the newer KC-92s that just came out. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed. 
uh, Dude, that, that actually awesome. pans out because because of yeah it, just a I want something really small because again my wife doesn't like to have like like if I had the the comically large RSL Speedwoofer 12s if I had that in the corner she'd be like no, yeah. she wouldn't yeah that's it's yeah. game over for that because that <laughs> one is just so big and just like it's just obvious it's like oh wow yeah yeah you got a subwoofer there <laughs> so uh so yeah i'm i'm really looking forward to the whatever kef happens to send me because they're super small but they can dig down so deep so i'm yeah I, i'm really looking forward to that and hopefully this creates like a nice you know working relationship with kef because they, they've yeah. got very nice stuff yeah, so I will, I've always heard they're hard to get stuff from, to to like review. That's what I've heard. Right? I don't like even from people that have worked for Kef directly at trade shows. They <laughs> said you might like your pro. You're you're gonna have a better time just buying it and reviewing it. I was like, oh, interesting. Wow. Okay, so not not anything against Kef. That's just what I've heard. But like, that's awesome. You have a contact. Get me in contact with them right now. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, there's okay. some After things that show. I. Right. Yeah. We'll talk. Um, there's some things that I've wanted to check out, um, from them. And I just, uh, you know, my emails go in the inbox and probably in the trash or something. I don't know. Like there's like, you <laughs> like right into the, the trash there. But, um, yeah, you know, it's funny you talk about like living room setups and stuff. And like, I, uh, so when I first got the flex, the mini DSP flex, uh, mm -hmm. SVS also sent the prime wireless pros. And then I used a couple, like a couple subwoofers I had. It's a PB 2000 pros in our living room, obviously total overkill for that. Cause we like just watch TV shows and stuff. We don't really watch movies out there. Um, mm -hmm. and it was, I, this is gonna, this is probably gonna sound weird, because I, I just love home theater and everything, but I hated having subwoofers out there. It totally ruined yeah. the vo like the aesthetic of it. I mean, it yeah. sounded like so much better, but um, it just was like we were tripping over them, and like uh, one was uh, yeah. one was like kind of in front of the AC return, which is kind of a no no. Like you you want to kind of keep that unblocked, um, and so mm. uh, I eventually moved them out, and we just ended up. What happened was we got a kitten really and i didn't want any expensive speakers and stuff out there you know so i like got it rid of everything um and then if we have like an old cheap like 100 hundred dollar sound bar that we just use and it's fine for for what it is i'd like to get something a little more substantial but like having a you know a kitten is is still like nope no nope, like he's gonna want to chew on it or <laughs> try to chew on the cables mm -hmm. or something so yeah it's just it's weird like you know, the sound bar obviously pales far. Like, it's a cheap sound bar, too. It's not even, like, anything that you've reviewed, like the the Nakamichi Dragon or anything like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. But holy, like, holy crap. It's like, uh, when I review, because we still have that Hisense TV, when I review that TV, I was like, yeah, the speakers in this thing are hot garbage. Like, it's, yeah. I took all the speakers out first. We were using the TV set, like the TV speakers for a little while. I was like, I, we can't do it. We we have to just, let me go grab this cheap sound bar. And even like a hundred dollar <laughs> cheap sound bar is a massive improvement over the, yeah. the speakers in that TV. So um, yeah, it, it's just, it's like one of those things though, where um, I always think about this because it does come up, you know, the whole sound bar versus home theater discussion. And I think there's a, mm -hmm. There is a place for sound bars in the trash. No, no, there's a place for sound bars. <laughs> um, just like there's a place for two channel, just like there's a place for two dot one. Like there's no, unfortunately, yeah. there's no one size fits all for like every living situation, you know, you know, and now we're kind of getting mm -hmm. into this thing where people are like, you know, uh, I know, you know, my friend Michael made a bunch, like made a video that kind of, I don't know if he kind of spurred other videos talking about our projectors dead. You know, as TVs get bigger and bigger, right. projectors dying. And it's like, I think there will always be a place for a projector. I think that in 30 years, mm -hmm. maybe not, but like, you know, in the, in the short term, the next 10 years, maybe. Yeah. I think, you know, projectors are still going to have a place, but as screens become bigger, get more affordable, 
get like brighter, just not in terms of overall brightness, but like HDR brightness, because that's like important. That's a place where projectors really do struggle still. There's, there's, it's really hard for a projector to hit these, you know, high nit yeah. levels for, for like HDR content. Cause I, you know, I still see that thing where it's like HDR is a gimmick, like 3D. It's like, no, HDR is unfortunate. Unfortunately, if you don't like HDR, it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere, right? Like 3D is like, it was like, on its way out. It's like on its way out when yeah. it like kind of came out. But, um, but yeah, like, so like, I think there's like improvements that can be made and uh, there and as, yeah, it's like as theaters become more and more like, you know, you, you like read this theater is like going, like going bankrupt or like filing bank bankruptcy. It's like, okay. Mm -hmm. Most people like, especially with like the, during the whole pandemic, like people were watching at home and they were like, started buying like more home theater gear and stuff. Um, yeah. you know, now there's like Apple vision pro where you can get like, I mean, it's for a single person, but you can get like a, you know, a hundred, what was it? 150 inch screen in front of your eyes or something. I don't know how good it is, but yeah. if someone wants to send me $3,500 to find out, I'll gladly do it. Um, check it <laughs> out. But, but yeah, so I think that like, I don't know where I was going with this. It's just a stream of consciousness is all it was. No, uh, <laughs> no, I think this is like a, a well, great hobby and, and, uh, like with sound bars and stuff, I don't think I've heard some great sound bars. I've heard crappy sound bars, just like I've heard mm. great speakers. I've heard not so great speakers. I think a problematic room is probably the number one issue for most, most people anyway. Um, oh, yeah, like it, it's, sure. You know, if you don't have like proper acoustics in your room, which most most people don't, even like a, it's hard to get like a great sounding room, even if you do have the capability to do it, because it's, it's it can be expensive. Mm -hmm. You know that room that I that I saw in uh um the Star Wars theater the a couple weeks ago with Michael, um that was a mm -hmm. room within a room, like it was built on like a floating foundation and everything so it was like completely decoupled oh, from wow. the house so like literally there was no transference of anything from that room to the house or vice versa um, whoa and like the acoustics in that room were really great but like the amount of money that was spent just doing that room within a room thing was a lot right it's kind of like out of the, out of the realm of most like people i think you know so, oh yeah wasn't that like a million dollar theater? It was something something like that, yeah. I mean, this wasn't the uh this wasn't the Louisiana one. This was the Florida one, but it was I think he uh, right. I don't remember how much he said he he it was at least half a mil, if not maybe yeah. like three quarters of a mil. And wow. yeah. And you know, it's it's it, you'd think that like because uh you know, you're not like, I don't have anywhere near that amount of money. I don't even have like 10% of that. <laughs> I don't have 1% of that. Now that I think about it, you know, it's like, okay, you see things and you're like, that's cool. But I don't, I, you know, that's not something that I personally would want. Cause it's not my preference or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. you know, but it's great to get ideas because you see things you're like, okay, how could I, how could I achieve something like that on a very limited budget? Right. Cause I'm all, that's what I'm always yeah. thinking about. And I love that kind of stuff where, uh, you know, you, you figure something out or it's like, I didn't know this type of product even existed until I was searching to try to do this thing. And so you make those kind of discoveries, you know, like a year ago, I never knew they had like ER extractors came like so far. You know, mm -hmm. cause I looked at those a couple years ago and they were few and far between and you were spending money like to get them like you were spending a few hundred dollars it's like i got one for 40 bucks and guess what i still use it to this day yeah that's what i use even the company even sent me their 200 dollars version it's sitting in the closet like i reviewed it and i'm like <laughs> i don't feel like unhooking this is because it, it does the exact same thing i don't need the expensive mm -hmm. one so i don't know maybe i'll do a giveaway if someone wants that um yay yeah just uh yeah let me know no uh Oh yeah, yeah. Because you you're I, you're you're pretty close to a milestone, aren't you, with your channel? Uh, yeah, almost twenty thousand. Is that what you're yeah, talking maybe about? Maybe you like, should have a 
maybe maybe twenty or twenty five thousand dollar giveaway or something. Or yeah. twenty five. I mean, I was like subscriber. Are you are you giving me twenty five thousand dollars to give away? <laughs> no, I mean that that's something like I could reach out. Like I would love to you know work with these brands that I've worked with so far and see if uh, we could do something with that. You know, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, having a giveaway, like just to kind of give back to the community. Uh, you know, yeah. if I, I always had this idea that I would love to, to do kind of like, uh, you know how you see those, those videos where people are going around and they're like, they're like, uh, this is going to sound weird, but, uh, to relax. Sometimes I watch like lawn mowing videos, <laughs> like we're just people mowing <laughs> lawns, but they have people that go around and do cleanups of like for free of these like overgrown lawns for, you know, people that are maybe oh, yeah. uh, disabled or whatever, uh, you know, it would be great to, to, uh, you know, get like a sponsored type of deal where like you could give someone a home theater or you could like a, a company would fly yeah. me to a place and like, we'll do a full, like I'll set up your mini DSP and everything for you. Like, and you know, as long as you're okay with me filming all of it, um, you know, it's like, yeah. You know, cause I, I mean, that would be super cool. I've, I've tried to do like remote mini DSP stuff. It's very, very difficult. Um, mm -hmm. the complexity of some people's systems are, are, are crazy. Um, yeah. And to try to, the worst thing is like trying to, as you know, as we did try to troubleshoot over the phone or over like a FaceTime. Call. Yeah, dude. It's like <laughs> you spend so much time doing that and you know, it's like, I never even thought to ask is like, Oh, what are you using? A Mac. If you said a Mac, I'm like, I'm out. You know, it's like I can't. <laughs> we, you got a Windows PC to do this on, so yeah. But it'd be cool to like, you know, do something like that. Maybe uh, you know, I, I there's so many ideas. Um, I I have wanted to do like a pimp my ride, but with home theaters. You, I sorry, I muted myself because I was gonna take a drink of coffee. You literally took the words out of my mouth. I was gonna use like a minute ago. I was going to say pimp my ride. <laughs> and if people wonder yeah. how alike Elon and I are, like how similar we are, that should tell you enough right there. <laughs> yeah. I've got to just kind of going back to uh, projectors being dead for a second. I have a reason why projectors aren't dead yet. And that is acoustic transparent screens. You don't, they're, no TV yet is acoustically transparent. So until, at least in my mind, until somehow they can get a TV that looks incredible and, you know, really bright, lots of nits, whatever. Yeah. And still, still be able to have audio pass through it. Um, well, technically, isn't that what, sony tvs do technically because they have that center center sink whatever thing where where the center channel is the tv itself because there's some like transducers inside of the tv i don't know yeah. i don't know how that science to, works but i'd have to look it up i don't i i'm not gonna sit here and try to speculate if, what they're doing with it like are they side firing it to do like a wraparound to the t you know what i mean like i don't yeah. know but i that is a good point um that there are no acoustically transparent TVs that we, that are out yet. Um, yeah. I mean, they... I know you can do like, a, if you want to have like dialogue coming straight out of the center of your screen, um, cause obviously with TVs right now, you have to have it below or above, uh, for your center channel. Yeah. Um, but I know like the, like the newer Sony ES AVRs right now have that, double or dual center sync thing mm. where you can have one above and below and it'll mix those two. So it sounds like it's directly yeah. in the center. So I think with um, that, like, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was done with that. Go ahead. Oh, uh, so with that, like having, cause that, like people used to do that where they put this, the center below and above, like they have dual centers and you like, obviously you have to be very careful about like phase cancellation and just things like that, mm -hmm. like alignment, like time alignment. Um, so I wonder like what Sony's doing, like to me, like when you do something like that, you like having some type of calibration done, even if it's like one of their auto cal or whatever is like, 
required at that point. Oh yeah. You know, just yeah. like throwing four subwoofers in a room, you can't just turn them all on and you're like, okay, they're good. It's 99% of the time that they're, they're going to have run into some issues with doing that. You know, even putting another subwoofer in a room, you might, you know, depending on where it is, it's, you, you're going to have to do a little like tweaking to it. So I'd be really yeah. curious to see how that like functions because like, you're right though. Like you can't, you, you know, like with a TV, your option is, okay, do I want LCR, you know, where, where if people don't know, it's like, literally it's not like, yeah, left center and right, but it's literally the same speaker. So like, if you have three towers, it's like the, the center tower speaker is your center channel. Um, it's a very popular, yeah. um, like thing. Um, because you get tonality, like a matching tonality from all, uh, or, or like the, the timbre and everything is completely the same. You're not mm -hmm. dealing with like all the drivers are in the same orientation and everything. So like, you don't have to worry about like anything, you know, cause like centers, center channels were invented to solve an issue, which is what, like placement is an issue. For center channels like you most people yeah. can't put a tower right there or, or even a bookshelf so uh, but mm -hmm. um you know there you can't can't really do that unless you mount the tv high up and then your neck is gonna pay for it you know <laughs> right. also i don't think anybody wants right. to watch a movie like that unless you're one of those crazy no. people that are like i'm x front row dune part two you know yeah <laughs> yeah um i, I want to I, was just gonna I don't. Say, I don't want to. I don't want to just look around the theater with my eyes. I want to look around with yeah, my. Yeah, I want to use my neck. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's immersive. Oh. Um. But what I was gonna say is, I also have a friend who um, has a really nice uh, theater with like a. I think it's the. I don't remember what JVC projector it is. Um, he's the one I bought the Denon X sixty three hundred H from. Um. Mm. So yeah. his theater is like crazy, right? Like, but he is not a fan fan of seeing the speakers in the room. That takes him out of the experience, and that's honestly yeah. a totally valid thing. Like, there are people that love giant ass speakers in the room, and they're like, "That's cool." You know, I I'm give or take. Like, I don't really, I really don't care either way. Although, if it's a cool looking mm -hmm. speaker, kind of want to see it, you know, or at least have the option to see it. Um, yeah, yeah. I kind of like how Michael's setup is where like he can turn the backlights on behind his screen. Um, youth man for those that know that Michael. Um, but like he like can turn the lights on behind a screen. So like you could see the speakers and everything. It looks super cool. Kind of reminds me mm -hmm. of like when you walk into like a Dolby cinema and you see like the, like kind of like the red, like accent lights behind the screen of the speakers. So you're like, that's super neat. Uh, you know, I yeah. don't know if they still do that, but. That was my experience when I went to Dolby Cinema. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, that's that's another thing to consider is, like, aesthetically, um, you know, when we go to the theater, outside of maybe, like, surrounds and Atmos, you don't really see speakers. Like, the fronts, at least. Subwoofers, you don't see subwoofers unless they're um, no. mounted. On, like, some of them do have subwoofers mounted on the ceiling for, for Atmos. And, and not just Atmos, but, like, just in general. I've seen... A, there's a, a a local theater where we used to live that that had subs on the ceiling, um, wow. which I'm like I hope those are secured. Uh, <laughs> they got to be at least 18s, I think. Um, yeah. But he has actually my friend has sub he has uh, six subwoofers total, two in the front, two in the middle on the ceiling, and then two in the rear. Whoa. Which to me, ceiling mounted subwoofers is. Strange. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like alignment yeah. may be an issue. Right. But I don't. I don't know. I don't know. They're also architectural triad subwoofers, so I think they're rated to go down to twenty hertz, but they don't go any lower. Like they have a hard cutoff mm. around twenty, which is which makes sense. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, and that, but that's totally like a, a personal preference thing, right? Like, uh, someone commented that you know he's like agree with your friend. I only want the screen to be visible, no speakers, no posters, no Funko Pops. Yeah, I mean, totally valid. You know, everybody has yeah. a different preference, and I, that's also something I really love about this. Is like my theater room is going to look different than yours, right? Yeah. This person's theater room is going to look different than theirs. I think there's. 
there are things to consider when you go, okay, I want better acoustics, but I also want, you know, busts of every major Arnold Schwarzenegger film or something, you know, I want, <laughs> I want all of my, yeah. all of my, uh, my, my lightsabers displayed on the wall or something. It's like, okay, you're going to sacrifice, like, it's your choice to sacrifice whatever you want or, or compromise whatever you want to get what you want. Cause it's, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes being in a space that's just kind of dead, it's kind of like my, my theater room is designed for one purpose. It's like watch movies, play games. That's pretty much it. Like, yeah. Um, watch TV shows, you know, consume media, but like, I'm not going to go in there and like, you know, it's not my working office or something. It could be, but it's like it's really what it's designed to do. It's very it's a very dry room. Um, it doesn't have a lot of room echo in it. I think the RT60 range is like 150, which is about <laughs> like 50 lower, 20 to 25 to 50 lower than what you want in the room. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, ve- I'm generalizing very broadly just to kind of get because I could just dive in, you know, deeper into that world there. But I. It's it's fine, honestly. Like I I've I've come to like really enjoy it. I could use some bass traps, but the room is really small, so it's probably not going to happen. You know, yeah. I with a uh, I'm running two PB four thousands in the front and two PB three thousands in the rear, all ran sealed, and yeah. it's fantastic. I get down to with all four subs, like after calibration. I get down to uh, around eight hertz in the room. <laughs> well, the, and the thing is, it's because the room's so small. Those subs are not rated to yeah. go down that low. Um, right. What it like uh, the amount of usable response I'm getting below, like let's say fourteen, um, it's relatively flat down to eight. But I'm also mm. running into like, okay, how, um, how like how accurate is this microphone below like you know a certain so that's what you got to take into account too. But I will say it's, yeah. it, it hits hard, man. Like it's, I used to run with like a really aggressive house curve and it's like, I've dialed it back every time, like a little bit over the years. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. Um, speaking of house curves, I have a question that, uh, actually it's not my question. It's Jeffrey's, um, Elon, do you use a house curve or any special calibration or adjustment for your subs? uh no not currently because uh, i don't even have like a mini dsp or anything right now um i've i've still got my iota avx 17 hooked up um which allows me to somewhat dial in the subwoofers independently too which is great um but i mean at the same time i mean brad kind of hit on that already too earlier is that we're swapping gear in and out so frequently um that it's it's just tough to really get get like everything dialed in every single time something new comes in or swapping in and out blah 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 so at least right now i just kind of i i run room calibration and maybe do some a few manual tweaks just to get like a good baseline of room correction going and i just kind of leave it at that i don't really get too crazy just because i know i'm gonna have to do it all over again when something new comes in so it's just kind of the the life of being a a a youtuber and a a reviewer really yeah is that yeah i I can't really stick with one thing for too long or else it's just going to be a waste of time to to really go all gung-ho and and really dial it in you know to the to the millisecond yeah. Um, oh yeah. I'm the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. That's, that's the problem. I have I, like, I'm still reviewing the PB four thousands. I have some other videos I'm doing with those. And it's like, I've used them for so long that at this point I'm like, I really want to keep these, you know, like I want to, yeah. but I also want to keep the three thousands. And it's mm-hmm. like, dude, I love that kind of like that small room. Like dude, it, like there's so much headroom too yeah. like i'm i'm probably using maybe each sub at even with eq and everything i'm not boosting really anything I'm probably using maybe 30 to 40 percent of the sub at any given time if that mm-hmm. so like yeah 
you're you're yeah it's it's like yeah, I have I have a lot of headroom to like really boost it for like music, but for movies I find that um, using just uh, like I used to have it boosted by like five dB. Um, for games I maybe still do that, but for movies I'm typically I switch it to the like the profile that follows the curve closely. So it's mm -hmm. and the curve I use is different than the one I used that I think I recommended in the original video. Um, so it's also like another like point that I could update in the, or that I'm going to update in the mini DSP tutorial. It's like, this is what I used to do. And it's like, you can still do it. Here are the file. Here's the <laughs> file. Here are the thing. But like, I don't like, this is a little, I found this over time to be a little too much. Um, yeah. You know, I like like detailed hard hitting base, but like when it starts to overshadow everything else, that's when it starts to become a problem. Um, anyway, yeah, dude. Um, so we have a few more questions. Um, we can answer and probably wrap up because we've been streaming for about two hours. If you want to do that, sir. Um, do it. Yeah, let's see. There was one um, from Jared asking, can you recommend a handheld SPL meter that can read over 130 dB? Um, I... Whoa. I personally don't use an SPL meter anymore. <laughs> I just start using R E. I started using R E W years ago, and I kind of never went back. So I don't have. Um, I mean, I still have my old Radio Shack SPL meter, but that thing cannot read over mm -hmm. 130 for sure. Um, Elon, do you know of anything that could to go that high? Over 130? What? Yeah. yeah. That's, well, hopefully that's you have really earplugs to go long. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully have earplugs to go yeah. along with that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, man. I I think like, I wonder. I wonder what you're trying to do. That that's my thing. It's yeah. How 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 loud can you go with REW? Um. Well, uh, you you start to run into the limitations of the the microphone and like clipping on the microphone. Oh. Yeah. So sure. like I think like at 100 like it won't do 130 for sure. I think the highest it'll yeah, go maybe one, is 120. 125. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. I'd be interested to see what you need 130 for, or if it was just kind of like a bragging right type thing, like Scott Newby. <laughs> they like just keeps pushing the bar higher. It's like how how are, like they're relocating furniture ab above the room, you know? When they're <laughs> <laughs> we had tile here, but we no longer do. Um, <laughs> type of thing, you know? Uh, I mean, more power to you if that's yeah, that's your thing. That's not my thing. If if I can feel the fillings leaving my teeth. The bass is too too much. <laughs> you're too loud. Correct. It's too loud. You're too old. Um, here's another question: Are you guys going to see Dune Part Two? And if so, are you guys watching it in one four three to one IMAX? That is a good question. Um, for those here that aren't familiar of what one four three to one is, you remember the old the old kind of tube style TVs? It's kind of that ratio a little bit. Yeah, those are almost those are a square, like, but not quite. Almost a square. Those are like one three three, so it's closer mm -hmm. to that than it is. But um, you know what? Yeah. I'll I'll throw something out there. Um, I haven't seen the first Dune. I have it, but I haven't actually watched it. <laughs> um, it came out I think around the time we were moving, and I was setting everything up, and I was like, I'm gonna wait to watch this until I get everything dialed in, and I just I've not. It's one of those movies I feel like you definitely, as with any like, what's that director's name? Denis Villeneuve, or I'm not, I'm butchering yeah. his name probably. Um, I have to be in the mood to watch his movies. Like, mm -hmm. I hated, I absolutely hated Arrival the first time I saw it. Uh, yeah. And and then the second time I watched it, I still wasn't in love with it, but I enjoyed it more because I was, I yeah, was in yeah. the mood to give it another shot. You know, um, he did. Didn't he do Prisoners? as well with you Jackman and Jake. I Bill believe wasn't that him. I believe he did. Yes. And he I did, did Blade like, Runner 2049. Yeah. That one. Uh, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I love parts of that movie. I don't know. I, I'm not a huge uh, fan of the original. Um, I love that. I yeah. love the original, but I'm not like, it's like prolific for like what it did for like movies, you know, like, 
And also mm-hmm. Ridley Scott, I will I'm gonna say something very controversial right now. Ridley Scott used to be a very prolific director. <laughs> and then here lately, yeah. he's made some I mean, you know what? He's he's still good to some people and that's that's fine. Um but I feel <laughs> like after Gladiator I wasn't really really involved in anything that he was Yeah. After Prometheus, I was just like, what is this, dude? Like, what is, what is <laughs> this know, movie? Dude. I thought it was supposed to be, like, alien. But, um, yeah. I mean, we that's a whole topic for another, uh, um, for another, uh, another day, True. I guess. Um, real quick, though. We'll I know, and to- just, just for, just go for ahead. the audience to know, um, I mean, it, like, like we said, Brad and I wanted to have this podcast or live stream, whatever you want to call it. Um, just as if we're having a conversation like we would on the phone, which usually ends up talking a lot about movies, talking a lot about music, whatever. So, I mean, obviously, you know, because we're trying to answer questions, we answered a lot of questions about home audio in particular, but there's going to be future episodes that are probably just going to be talking about movies. We we've, we've run this topic or ran this idea by each other of talking about the parallels between George Lucas's career and Peter Jackson's career. So we're probably going to do an episode that kind of focuses on that. Um, so yeah, just kind of be aware that it's not going to be just home theater talk because Brad and I are both, you know, huge movie buffs, movie fans, and we really like to listen to music and we're inspired when we hear good music and we're inspired when we watch really good movies and we want to talk about it with people and talk about it with each other. So yeah, this, uh, you know, of all the other live streams that you're, you're going to be watching, like maybe Chana's with daily hi-fi and Joe and tell, or maybe you're watching Michael youth man's live stream. Um, we're, we're trying to do a little bit different than that because we don't want to be just another one of those. I mean, more power to them. Like for real, I mean, there's yeah, a reason yeah. why you tune into those for sure. Yeah, but but we're we're also trying to be a little bit more lax in that we we just want to talk about a lot of the stuff that we really enjoy too. Yeah. Um. So yeah, just be aware of that. It's yeah. gonna be fun. And I and I think Elon and I actually touched on this too to kind of piggyback off what you're saying is, you know, uh, this is gonna sound weird to some people watching this, but you know the Elon that you see in the videos. And you know the Brad that you see in the videos, and we're we're typically a little di- like those are typically that I script most of my videos out, you know like me too. Uh, yeah, you know I'm 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 a little different in the video because I I don't know you just it's kind of like when you watch a news anchor and then you, you like they're talking to their coworker and then the camera goes like turns on and suddenly they're like <laughs> tonight on the blah 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 you know um, it's not exactly like that and. If actually, if you go back and watch some of my early videos, I'm very, it's not like I'm uncomfortable in front of the camera, but like, I'm very <laughs> like, I'm trying to find my voice, you know, um, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm definitely not one of these people that like yells into the camera all the time. And that seems to be like a popular thing, um, that, uh, is, it's going around with, with like, especially like with short form content is like how many yeah. people well, I'm just hit the mic. Uh, how many people yell or how many people hold their, hold their microphone up to their, you see them like this and they're holding it. I'm like, stop doing that. Yeah, stop doing dude. that. Um, yeah. so yeah, I think, uh, this is just kind of a place where, uh, you know, to, to what Elon was talking about, um, is just kind of get more of us, more of this conversation, kind of conversationalist thing where like, you know, you can get involved as the audience, but it may not necessarily always be about home theater or, you know what I mean? Like it, there's a, there's, yeah. there's enough areas in this space that like, you know, let's just like have fun with it and like talk about stuff. And I think that that yeah. is like, you know, people kind of respond to that realness, I guess. I, like I do, I know when I, when I see two people just having like a conversation it's you know, it's, it's, it's great. It's, you know, there's like I said, this space is big enough for everyone, and it's like everyone's welcome. You know, there's no like, yeah. I'm always like, 
uh, you know, I'll, I'll see people talk about their home theaters. They're like, well, I don't have, I don't have a high end theater. It's like, I, I don't either. You know what I mean? Like if you look at my speakers, they're pioneer Andrew Jones. They're literally entry level speakers. Like I don't have a, like I have maybe <laughs> high end, com- what people consider high end components. Okay. That's fine. Um, but like, you know, I grew up not having a lot of money and I'm still, you Same. know, we still don't have a lot of money. And so, uh, you know, you make <laughs> things work and I'm all about how can you get the most out of like what you have, regardless of like how much it costs. You could have a $200 yeah. speaker. You could have a $2,000 speaker. What can you do to either one of those that will like get you the most out of it? And so like, I'm always just like, yeah. how can you squeeze out all of the performance out of your system that you can? Similar to like how people love like overclocking on a PC or something, right? Like how can I squeeze Mm -hmm. out that extra, you know, amount of performance out of this thing? It's like, cool. Like that's what I'm about, you know, but that trickles upward too. So as you upgrade, you're learning more. You're, you're, you can take what you've learned here and apply it to that, you know? So yeah, this space is like, I'm not a gatekeeper. I want people to just like, have a good theater and enjoy what they have. And if you got a sound bar and people give you crap about it, maybe stop talking to those people, you know, unless they're your significant yeah. other, then you, you maybe consider therapy, but, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, in, in all seriousness, they're like, you know, never seek validation for what you have is m- my main thing. Enjoy mm-hmm. what you have. Know that, yeah, I could upgrade one day, but like, I'm going to enjoy what I have. Cause like life's too short anyway. Um, yeah, that kind of went off there. Sorry. See, that is what this is all about. <laughs> <laughs> in answer in answer to that question earlier too about IMAX, um at least in my particular area in Northern California, I you know, the city that I live near uh is it's actually not that big. It's maybe 100,000 yeah. people, 90,000 people. We have one uh movie theater and it's a Cinemark. So I don't even live near Adobe cinema. I don't have an IMAX. We have, yeah. oh gosh, what is it called? It's like pseudo IMAX, uh, at Cinemark. I forget what it's called, yeah, but it's probably their, their that, version of the, the kind of big screen, like exactly of sound yeah. Type thing. Yeah. Yeah. We have, so a- there's, I have that, but, but at the same time, that's kind of why I haven't been able to, or at least don't really have the desire to go see movies yeah. just because my movie theater experience here is just kind of, it's okay. It's, it's it's decent. Yeah. So what do the kids say? Mid, is it mid? When you say it's mid, (laughs) I'm not going there. Sorry. (laughs) It's so mid, bro. It's so mid. What does that even mean? (laughs) Um, Yeah. We have a, we haven't even been to the movie since we moved um, here. Like, so about two years um, we have a Cineopolis. It's a, I think it, I don't think it's a Cinemark, but it's a Cineopolis. They have an IMAX and this is kind of mm-hmm. like one of those kind of theaters where you can go in and you can get like, there's like a restaurant in the theater. So you can get like a cheeseburger and you can get like kind of, you know, like think of like an app. I always say it's like an Applebee's inside of a movie theater. You know, you're spending 20 bucks for cheeseburgers and fries or whatever. And, you know, it's like, is it any good? I don't know. We've never tried it. I do. I do want to try it, but it's like you know, you go and sit down. And you can eat your cheeseburger and watch your movie. Mm. You can drink beer, and they have cocktails and stuff. I went once. I told my wife we have they have cocktails. She's like, "When can we go? When? What? What movie do you want to see?" <laughs> She's so we're like Ghostbusters. I guess let's give it a shot. So, but yeah, I mean, it. You know, it might be an experience, although. We've been to a few theaters like that, and my experience so far has kind of been lackluster in terms of audiovisual quality. Um, yeah. It's normally taken a backseat to the ambiance of the theater, I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, who know? Who knows? Um, I think it might be kind of cool to talk about it in a in a theater uh, or in a theater in a video or a live stream where it's like, yeah, we went to this theater and it was garbage or like, actually, if you live in the area, you know, check this out, you know, whatever. Um, might be kind of cool. Um, not sponsored by the yeah, way. True. But, um, so we got two questions left. They're kind of late, late arrivals. And then we'll wrap this up here. I'll start with the last question first. Last question. <gasps> first. Um, Whoa. What are your two 
top movies. So I know what mine are, and I don't know if this is a home theater specific question, but I'm going to say no, it isn't. Because these are just my top two movies of all time. Like these are the two movies mm-hmm. that are probably my favorite movies of all time. Um, I'll go first if that's okay with you, Elon. Unless you, yes, unless please. You I'm still thinking. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know why I have these as like my go-to. Like I just know this, right? Um, top movie. It, it's actually a tie. So like these are just like the top two movies, but like they're they're one and the same to me in terms of like how much I love each one of these movies, and they're two very different movies. Mm-hmm. Back to the Future, mm-hmm. Shawshank Redemption. Those two uh, movies, yeah. um, Frank did, like the Shawshank Redemption was one of those movies that I saw um, when I was about twelve. I know <laughs> what. <laughs> that movie and people was like wait Jurassic Park's not on there Jurassic Park's in the top five but it's not in the top two those are back to the future Shawshank but Shawshank after seeing Shawshank and after seeing um, Jurassic Park both of those movies made me want to make movies like they made Mm -hmm. me want to be a filmmaker Shawshank probably more than anything because I was like how do you at at the time I didn't even know it was a book right or like novella so then I read the novella and I was like whoa like they did a great job you know, like with this. And then I started, you know, looking into the director and everything. And then back to the future was just something that like I grew up watching, but I was always, this is going to be weird for people to hear. I was always more of a back to the future guy. Cause you can't compare back to the future and star Wars, but people were like, dude, I love star Wars. Like, you know, if you're a nerd, you love star Wars. It's like, I love back to the future though. Like I, I'd rather watch back to the future than star Wars, but that's me. Yeah. Like, and I still enjoy star Wars, but I'm probably not, someone who like you could talk to about you know jar jar binks being a sith lord and like if you go back through the prequels <laughs> you could see all that it's like I, w- I made the mistake of wearing a star wars shirt to work when i uh, worked at amazon and some guy was like just wanted to talk to me and my wife because we're both <laughs> nerds about the whole jar jar binks sith lord thing and i was like yeah all right like you know <laughs> anyway so those cool are my story, two. What bro. about yours, man? <laughs> right, it's a cool story. Um, bro. <laughs> well, I would say, well, number one, or one one of them, would actually be. Uh, it's technically a trilogy, even though the stories don't have anything to do with each other. But it's the Cornetto trilogy. Oh yeah, um, I mean, Shaun, Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and World's End, because Edgar Wright is one of my favorite directors of all time. Um, because I, I just total his sense of humor that he portrays, or the just the tone that he has in all of his films, it's like it was meant for me. Um, he just gets me, or I get him, or vice versa, whatever. Just the the sense of humor, the action, the the pace of it, the dialogue, everything about his movies, and, and, and he's he's super, hyper, he's hyper focused on audio too. Yes, yeah, um, and visual he effects. Is such, yes, like he's. I mean, he just does it all, and he's he's just laser focused on what he wants in his vision, mm-hmm. and yeah, like I said, it's just whatever he does. It's just like we must be. We would probably be really good friends in real life because yeah, it's just everything about it just you know inspires me and and just I, I get it and he gets me and I get him yeah. So you know he reminds um, me of like a uh, and I know this is probably going to sound kind of weird but he has like the because I follow him on Twitter um, and uh, oh yeah Yellow Mobile. Uh, says he loved loved him since the space tv show space is a great tv show Mm -hmm. there's there's like so many quotes that i that i would quote to my wife before she watched it and then it was like okay (laughs) kind of like she got it afterward just kind of like watching the it crowd like quoting that to her and she's like i have no idea what you're talking about (laughs) and i'd be like you know you know then then now we're just like a fire at the sea parks like we'll just quote it like all the time (laughs) Um, but yeah, space was a great TV, TV show. 
there's always that that she's like you so damaged him i just remember her saying that to anyway sorry i'm, I'm like <laughs> stealing your thunder there but no to go to, to what i was saying um edgar wright is he's so knowledgeable about movies like he's he's like one yes. of those people like like almost like kind of like a british martin scorsese in a way because like you talk about mm. a movie he's probably seen it like he's he's like this walking, he's a cinephile he's yeah. a bona fide cinephile yep, yep. And, and his his, phys, his physical media collection is enormous. So yeah, yeah I, he's just a huge fan. It's it's great. It shows. It, it yeah. And so what what would your so that would be the Cornetto trilogy, your number one. Yeah. Would you have a number two? Um because that's a question, or else we're we are we are going to be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh it's not it's not necessarily like I don't know. It's weird. It's, it's not like a, like a huge favorite of mine, but at the same time, it's one that I could watch every single, like if I was forced to, I could still watch it every day. And that is the man who knew too little with Bill Murray. Mm. Um, just, uh, it's just so great. It's just Bill Murray yeah. being Bill Murray and he's over in England. Um, going through all these wacky scenarios, you know, the whole time he's thinking it's a show that it's, you know, everybody's actors and they're all part of this <laughs> show what, when it's actually, actually happening in real life. And he's just, you know, so lackadaisical and aloof going through everything and, you know, not thinking is he's in danger at all. So like, yeah. I don't know, man. That that one just gets me every time, just because his performance is just so. I mean, memorable. it's Bill Murray. Like, you know, like yeah. yeah, one of my favorite. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen that movie. Now that I think about it, I think that might have to go on my list of movies to watch. Um, yes, like, I must. mean he's done so many great movies, but the one that and I don't know why this always sticks with me, but his character in Kingpin. You know the the bowling movie from the Fairley Brothers. I don't know if you've ever. Yes. He has, he yes. has that line <laughs> where he's like, you know, for years I blame myself for what happened to you. How you been otherwise? Like he just completely glosses over the fact that he lost <laughs> his hand because of this guy. And he's like, How you been otherwise? And the whole hair thing with the comb over and oh man, it was so <laughs> like, yeah, it's just such a man, that that's back when the Fairley brothers were like on top of their game. Oh yeah, and I, I don't know what they happened. Had hit, hit after hit for a yeah. while, and then they tried to make Dumb and Dumber two or whatever. Can we just forget uh, that that exists? Yeah, um, I yeah, know, right. All right. So last question here from Jose: Top games that you enjoy the most on your setup, image, sound, etc. Now I know Elon. Um, you're not a. I mean, is it is it awful to say you're not yeah, a huge not gamer? Huge. No, I was just. About I mean, I'm to say not that. either. I just uh, decided to put it in my name, in my you know YouTube. No, no, no. I, I do play a lot of games. Um, in fact, I think that's the main yeah. way I consume content. Believe it or not. Um, Your gaming. It used to, yeah, it used to be movies and show, but like here lately, it's like if I have any free time, I'm I'm gaming. Like I'm playing a game. Um, recently, um, I have been, I was playing Helldivers 2. A, a friend actually bought that for me on PC. Hmm. It is, uh, a, a, a great game, but currently I can't recommend it at all. Like I, I give it like, <laughs> it, because it's a, it's a, 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 like a live service game, meaning that you always have to be connected to the server. They're having oh, so many yeah. in, server issues right now. Um, uh, I mm -hmm. was playing it launch week, pretty much no problem. Last Thursday, I just started getting it. Like, basically, I haven't been able to play the game for like almost a week now. Um, mm -hmm. Haven't been able to get in through the server issues. Normal, like my friend who has been playing it logged like 60 hours in like a week and a half. Um, he's like, dude, I waited two hours the other night staring at the screen. I'm like, why did you wait two hours? Like, don't do that. <laughs> like, stop. So they, <laughs> until they figure it out, um, they need to like, yeah. But what I will say is um, visually it looks it, like the HDR presentation is really great. Graphically, it has kind of a, the makings of an, a last gen game in many ways. 
Um, it's been in development mm. for a while, so it's not. I mean, it looks good. Um, they need to kind of work on their like anti-aliasing because there's. I think they're using like some really old like FSR one. I know you probably have no idea what that means, Elon. Um, but it's like a form of upscaling Sorry. in a way. Mm. The AMD, like it's it was AMD's very first thing and it, like first foray into that, and it it has like all the hallmarks of it, like very like shimmering edges and everything. Um, mm. But the audio though in Dolby Atmos um, on PC at least has been amazing. Like you yeah. call these hell pods from like your ship up in space, like while you're on this planet. And like, depending mm -hmm. on where you are and where the ship is, you actually hear, like when you call in like an airstrike, you'll hear it being launched from the ship, wherever the ship is. So if it's like in like your, your back rear left or like your upper rear left, it sounds like it's coming from there. And it's <laughs> like, that's cool. The bass is insane in the game. It's really great. Yeah. Um. So like all in all, like it's a fantastic from like a visual perspective, from an audio perspective from an actual like gameplay experience perspective right now, I would give it a solid right. like two out of 10 for the gameplay experience because you can't even freaking play the game. But from like an right. audio visual standpoint, I'd probably say it's a, like, if I were just saying audio, it'd probably be like a nine out of 10, close to a 10 out of 10 visuals because it mm -hmm. looks a little like last gen, a little bit, probably maybe a seven or eight out of 10. Still looks good, serviceable. You're not going to be like, this game is yeah. the ugliest looking game I've ever played. No, it, it still looks good. Um, the other one I've been playing a lot is uh, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Um, oh yeah, that is a like that is a looker, man. That and, and it. So the two games I just talked about, probably some of the uh, the more recent games, but um, Avatar is probably one of the best sounding games I've ever heard in my theater. Really? Um, wow. It is. Yeah. Uh, from like re base response to the uh, audio propagation and how they've set it up in the game. So like in most games they have it. So like, yeah, each sound will, um, you know, depending on where you are, it will like kind of echo in a certain way. So like if you're out in a field and you shoot a gun, it's going to sound different than if you're in like, let's say a room and you shoot a gun or, or fire an arrow or something. Whereas like mm -hmm. this game, because rate like it uses ray tracing for everything, you can't turn it off. Um, they actually mm -hmm. use uh, ray traced audio, so it's detecting Dude. what type of material that surface is, how far away it is, and actually like bouncing rays off of that to determine like the sound propagation and everything. Um, it, it so basically it means that anywhere you are. It has this almost like hyper realistic, like not even not hyper realistic. It's very a realistic sound in terms of like I'm on an alien planet, um, but yeah, it's, so it's something that like if you don't really have it cranked, it may be kind of hard to notice. But the little details do like kind of add up. Um, even like the yeah. opening mission, like where you're trying to escape this bunker, um, it's it, it like dude, there's like some moments in there that like uh, it, it scared me, like because the bass hit so hard. <laughs> I was playing yeah. like great. I was playing at like minus ten dB, so I'm like it's cranked, right? Yeah. Um, that's the other thing that I've noticed, like with games more recently, is um, they actually have like not it's not more recently, but like they have dynamic range selections that are actually accurate. So like if you put it oh. on studio dynamic range, like you're in a mixing studio, you do need to crank it up. Like it's it's kind of like when you put on a Blu-ray and you're like I got to crank this up to like minus ten to hear shit mm -hmm. you kind of have to do the same thing whereas like you know then you could go to like midnight mode and like it'll kind of compress everything but yeah dude the, the, sure. the dynamic range is crazy from like super loud stuff to like really like kind of low ambient stuff um yeah i will say for like subtlety avatar yeah. definitely gets like the the nod there but um it is also one of the probably one of the best looking games as well yellow mobile said gorgeous looking game though it is like yeah what they were able to do with it um is insane and like i can't even like it's like i'm playing it on pc and it's it's definitely heavy right like it's a heavy game like to run um you know i drop it down from like ultra to high and it's pretty pretty great um <laughs> 
Yeah, they're, they're actually <laughs> talking about the stunning moment when you finally get out of that bunker and emerge into pan, uh, the Pandora forest, breathtaking stuff. So that's like the first time you see the forest and everything, like, and you can just walk around and it, like, it has this, it does have this hyper-realistic quality to it. And there's a lot of, like, micro detail in there that, like, you know, I'm sure you've noticed, like, because I know you play, like, you know, Zelda and, and stuff, but you've played games before where you walk up to, like, a mm -hmm. tree, and as you get closer, you're like, oh, that doesn't look that good. It starts to kind of fall apart, right? Yeah. You're like, oh, this, this <laughs> right. game, the, the, that, that, like, you can walk up pretty close to stuff, and it, and it holds up, like, really well. Um, yeah, I mean, it, Are you playing that on PC as well? Yeah. Yeah, I I basically ever since I upgraded my graphics card and CPU, I've been pretty much like uh playing on PC. That's it. Like I don't I haven't really yeah. turned the consoles on at all. Um you know, I do play with a controller on PC just because um keyboard and mouse in a theater is kind of wonky and I really just don't Yeah. I don't know. I kind of like the 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 controller experience for most games. I don't play any like Mm -hmm. competitive stuff so it's like the need for that i also have this really like to kind of go off topic really quick but i also have this thing where i'm trying to find like if i'm watching a video about like maybe tips and tricks on a game and someone's playing on pc just slow your mouse down a little bit man like they're going all over the place yeah. like this and i'm like Ugh. it's just like you're trying to make <laughs> something so people could follow and i can't follow it because like it's like i'm having a seizure or something you know but, <laughs> right. but yeah the that's what I've been playing recently. Um, you know, I think uh, my wife and I have been playing a, through a game called It Takes Two. Um, we actually finished that. Hmm. It's like a co-op game. Um, oh. And I had played it before. I think it's on Switch as well. So if your wife is into gaming at all, um, Elon, it's a, it's a it's a fun time to play together. Um, and we had a ton of fun. And that 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 game actually looks really really good and also sounds really good. Um, so uh, those are kind of like what I've been playing recently, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. Do you have anything? It, it takes two. Is that what you said? It, it takes two. Yeah. Like the, uh, Mary Kate and Ashley movie, but different. <laughs> uh, Aww, no no Steve Gutenberg. Like yeah. No Steve <laughs> Gutenberg and, and, uh, Kirstie Alley, Christy Alley. I can't remember. Um, uh, but yeah, yeah. So that's, that's basically it. Yeah, I'm basically just still playing Zelda. There you go. Tears of the Kingdom. I just T -O -T -K. Yeah, I just really enjoy that world. I yeah. just cuz I don't I don't really have a lot of time to play video games as as it is, so when I do get a chance to sit down and just kind of veg, <laughs> then uh then yeah, I, I like just being in that world and um, you know, completing the quests and finding all the different things and exploring that massive, massive map. So, and I, I just love the, you know, the the sound is great. I, I love the sound design in particular yeah. and the, just the, the game mechanics. Like Nintendo is really good at just n dialing in their mechanics mm -hmm. Um, it is just such a smooth experience, especially w when you're, you know, in the middle of fighting a bunch of little guys all surrounding you and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't feel like there's any lag whatsoever. It's just very, very responsive and intuitive. And I just really like everything about the game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nintendo's so. always been really good about being consistent with mm -hmm. like their first party games uh you know you yeah. you kind of always have a level of quality with them that you maybe not don't necessarily get from you know a, another game that from a third party developer that you know the switch is kind of like an afterthought you know they're they're doing ps5 yeah. or, you know they're doing playstation xbox whatever and, sure uh, they're porting it over to switch and they're having to make sacrifices there because obviously like a switch is a portable system. And so, but yeah, like all mm -hmm. the first party stuff, I like, I basically have a switch for first party games and yep. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. Like to, to know, like you're going to get a good experience from like a Mario game or something. Like I've been playing mm -hmm. through, was it, 
I don't even know what game it is. It's a Yoshi game. It's one. It's I think it's the only Yoshi game mm-hmm. on the Switch, and we got it because my wife loves Yoshi. I don't think she's played it at all. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just been me. <laughs> but I mean, yeah. I've enjoyed it, and it's great to kind of like have it on the go and stuff. Um, I don't really have a. Mm-hmm. I really don't leave the house much um, if I can help it, but because the sun is evil. No. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think that's uh, I think we're that's a good place to end end the conversation there. Yeah. Is there any any final thoughts you want to to give the people of the YouTube lands and uh, wherever you may be listening to this too? I think we're gonna we're gonna start putting this on podcast platforms for those that just want to listen to the audio as well, right? Is that what we're? Yeah, we're yeah, that's the do? plan. Um, I'm trying to get that set up so then, uh, yeah, because I know not everybody can tune in on the live stream or if you just want to like listen to this at work. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty much the the main reason I wanted to have the podcast version of it as well. Yeah. So you can, you know, obviously you can't your podcast platform of choice, you can't right? do like, this while you're at work. Right. You know? right. <laughs> you can't have it on in the background either. Cause you know, yeah. And all, but also in, in all seriousness at, at your work, you may not have, uh, you know, you may not have good internet. You may be using your, your mobile data or whatever. And if you have a mobile data cap, mm-hmm. you don't want to use, like, if you're just listening to audio, you're just using it to listen to audio. Why, why use the extra bandwidth when you don't need yeah. to, you know? So, you know, yeah, listen exactly. to it in podcast form. So yeah, we're going to work on that. Um, Elon's kind of spearheading the, the, uh, the momentum there, not spearhead, spearhead. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I need more coffee or something. Yeah, but, uh, spearheading. <laughs> spearheading. Yeah, no, no, no. I think uh, you know you're you're kind of like taking the reins there and, and setting it up. And Elon's actually created most of the the art that you've seen for this stuff. So huge props to him because like I've either forgotten or just been too busy to to do stuff. So I just wanted to give a shout out to him because he's he's the one that's kind of like made the thumbnails and figured out a name and um kind of all that stuff. So yeah. Um, and I've kind of just been like, we could use Ecamm. I, I got that going for me, <laughs> which we might end up switching out for something else because I don't want this to be an issue every time where it's like Elon has to leave five times and come back. Did I, when I did come back that last time, has it been fine ever since? It's been fine. Or is it um, unless I, unless I throw a comment up on the screen and then it kind of delays you a little bit. Um, so okay, it might be on my end. I'm thinking it might be on my end or it might be an Ecamm thing. So for those that don't know, Ecamm <laughs> is a local app on your computer. It's not a web-based thing like StreamYard or whatever. So it's limited by the resources of the computer. So that might be a factor. Um, so if you want, if you guys want to send me money, I'll buy a more powerful computer. So maybe that's it. We can test it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah. I think, uh, yeah, we're going to try to do this uh, every week, Tuesday night, 7 p.m. I'm not saying we're going to be, like, be religious with it if something comes up and one of us can't make it. Um, we may do a solo thing, yeah. um, or we may just say, hey, you know, we're going to we're gonna pick up next week or whatever, um, you yeah. know, depending. You know, especially if it's, like, around holidays or something, then obviously that's a, that's a time period where people get busy and... Uh, things happen. Yeah. So I do want to thank everyone for joining. We still have 30 viewers right now. I know, two man. And ha- that's two awesome. And a half hours. So that's more than I like, that's more than like, that's more than, than like I've ever seen in my life. No, um, no, that's, that, I mean, that's <laughs> really good for like, I've, I haven't live streamed in forever. So thank you guys for joining us again. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, hopefully we'll see you here next week around the same time, 7 PM Eastern. 4 p.m. Uh, specific Pacific. Um, <laughs> I'm like one of those people that says espresso instead of espresso. I'm kidding. I don't. Mm. I worked at Starbucks. <laughs> I think I know the difference. Especially. Especially, yes. Uh, but thank you again, guys. I think we're going to end it there. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks.